What is going on? All right, we're finally back. Sorry for the brief delay. We are uh, going to be retinting um, probably the front doors too, but definitely we're going to be doing the windshield in what is the best new ceramic. Um, we're going to be putting on Apex uh, by Geo. We're going to it's their we're going to do their fifty percent. So as far as the shading goes, that's not going to look much different. I already have fifty and thirty-five. Uh, we're going to take the film, we're going to put it over on the heat box over there. Um, we're going to play around with it. With it. We're going to check the coloring and stuff. And, uh, and it's going to be fun. I thought you fell off the planet. No, no, no. What's up, Michael? Sergio? You my boy. No, I had a... Uh, well, there's like a little lapse in the schedule too. And then this week was definitely a little bit weird. When is Apex available on your site? It is actually, but we haven't used it yet, so <laughs> we're going to use that today. How much for this one? Uh, this one is, uh, this one's free. It's just cost my time because it's mine. <laughs> Could you test carbon five and ceramic five on the heat box? Uh... I suppose um, the numbers are going to be a little bit better for carbon five, uh, ceramic five. Uh, they're going to be roughly the same though. I just have to get them out of the boxes and then bring them over. So let me let me gather those things too. Um, what's the purpose of dryer sheets for shrinking rear windshields? Uh, you need some type of schmush, schmutz, I don't know. You need something in between the film and the glass. Uh, it, it just helps the film kind of like stick where you want it to stick, but also kind of float. If you, if you don't use one, you'll know what the problem is really fast. It's just a little hard to explain. Uh, <laughs> thank you, guys. Should I sell carbon five instead of ceramic? Well, the problem is when people want something more. I mean, ceramic, I think, is going to do better regardless. But that, it doesn't make much sense if somebody wants, like, 50% with better heat rejection. It's totally different. I got a five-gallon keg for free. What else do I need to start working with it, and where can I buy it? Oh, uh, go to sundistributingdirect.com. I know that's a, uh, here, that's why I did this, Sun Distributing. They have all the tint keg stuff, so they'll be able to tell you what you need, because sometimes uh, you, you might have a ball lock connector, you might have pin lock connectors, and then they have all the hose and, and sprayer set up, so they'll tell you exactly what you need uh, to get that going. Very cool. Uh, looking to transition from Lexan to Geo now that they have this Apex, but I need a comparison between the, the two top tiers between Lexan and Geo. They both at 95% IR. Oh, interesting. <laughs> well, I tell you, at the end of the day, when you're paying a lot more for window film, you want a company that's going to back you up too. So there's, uh, there's reasons why Geo also costs a little bit more that way. Will a 20% roll work on a 90 Silverado? Should be fine. Should be fine on that. Uh, but some of those older school windows are definitely a little taller. I don't remember for sure. You can ask in my uh, Facebook group. They'll be able to tell you. Is that the V8 Blazer? No, it's the uh, Red Line. Pretty sure it's a V6. I actually don't know. It's, it's quick, though. It's fun. I looked at the sticker on it, and I was like, what the? But it looks cool, so. <laughs> Finally going with some Prime XR Plus. <laughs> no, we're doing uh, Apex by Geo, finally. So we have some work to do. We got to do a full removal, uh, and then we're going to retint the windshield. We're probably going to do the same thing with the doors, but I'm going to start with the windshield. Get that out of the way first. 
I just don't want to do these little quarters. The doors, whatever. The little roll downs, or the little quarter windows. I'm so tired of those. Okay, we all good? Sweet. Okay, let me uh, let me hang this up because this is about to get steamy. So, I have a new steamer that's on the way. Uh, this thing, I, I've been using it for a little while. I actually really liked it until it totally just didn't work one day. And that was after like, I don't know, hauling it back and forth for like, maybe like six months to a year. Super, Anna. super duper. Uh, Kevin Gary Bay super chatted $4.99. Oh, sure. Thank you. Tint. But I also rap a lot. You mm. think it would be a good idea to buy a small keg for alcohol? I tint, but I also rap a lot. Do you think it'd be a good idea to buy a small keg for alcohol? Thank you for the five. Um, mm, usually use like a spray bottle or something. That's a hard thing to say. So I don't use... Um, alcohol for tinting, um, but wherever you might use it for wrapping, if you if you need like a chemical on hand and you need like a lot of it, it will be beneficial. Like uh, the the best example that I can give you is paint protection film. So they have like you'll have your like soapy water solution, uh, but you also have your like application solution. So there's a lot of people that will set up two kegs and will have like a, a hot mix and like a cold mix. So if you think you're going to be spraying a lot of it, then it would be helpful. Thank you for the five. That's as best as I can say. Lexan's been having issues sticking to the dot matrix and ceramic. Uh, I shop, I work. Okay, we got to start this. 20% has curled it off. So there's always going to be, like with cheaper films, there's always going to be quality issues. That's just kind of how it goes. And they could pop up in any number of ways, and they might not be bad for everybody. But that's like, when you, when you like, I, I'm all for trying the different ones. I couldn't necessarily take it seriously for my own business because it, it's just, I've had two other, I've had too many other films give me problems, especially when I'm trying to budget for those films. I just want something I know is gonna work. So this I, I know is gonna work. So I don't wanna screw around with anything else. And I charge accordingly. So if you're a little bit more budget friendly, then I totally understand shopping for something like that. Um, I'm just, whatever the end result's gonna be, I'm not gonna be able to tell you one way or the other how long it's gonna last. That's gonna be up to you. But we can check it out for like, you know, 95% uh, IR reduction. We could see the clarity. We could see the, the usability and stuff like that. That would be okay. But it's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, like the Walmart ceramic. You know, you can go to Walmart, spend 20 bucks, get a roll of ceramic that blocks out uh, the most amount of heat that I've ever seen, personally, on a heat box demo. Amazing, but then you pull it outside and it's hazy as hell. So I'm assuming the Lexan's going to be better, but we're not going to be doing that today. <laughs> you seem like you poke to get a car tinted. Do customers ever complain about wait time? Oh, do our customers ever complain about wait times? Um, no, because they know in advance. I tell them about how long it's going to take. I usually overshoot, if anything. There's been a couple of times that I've been running like a little late afterwards. But your business, what's, what's really interesting about your tint business is you can set it up any which way that you want. I mean, nobody likes to wait forever, but some people can actually just drop off their cars and then they, I think more often than not, more people just don't want hassle. So as long as you're putting out good work, 
you know, whatever your guidelines are is, is whatever they are. So if somebody were to, like, <laughs> if, uh, if somebody calls and they're like, oh, that's going to take, that's, like, I quote them a time and they say, oh, that's just going to be way too long. I'm going to be like, okay, then I suggest probably looking elsewhere. <laughs> like, that's it. I'm not going to be like, oh, well, I'm so sorry that I'm going to take too long to make sure I do a good job. I'm not going to apologize for that. That's crazy. So. Do brands, do brands matter? Uh, for window film, uh, not, not really. Not in the same way. So they matter more for the installer, they matter more for company support. So there's like certain brands and companies that I would choose over other ones. But as far as forward facing to your clients, not exactly. Most people aren't coming to you for any one particular film. If they are, that company that has that film is doing a fantastic job. But for the most part, people are coming to you for a window tint. And then you introduce them into to what you have. So when they start investigating your business a little bit, then, you know, if you have something that's, I don't know, a little bit more generic or whatever, you might put off some people. But... Yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of times that people are just going to trust you as a business. So they don't know much about window film. They're coming to you. Um, and then at the end of the day, you know, you just you want to give them a good job. So they're usually going to be happy with whatever you install it as long as you like it yourself. All right, so we are... We are into the removal. So this has been on here. Uh, this is Pro Nano 50. This has been on here ever since we did a video last year on it. This is the perfect windshield getting removed right now. I'm very sad. But the film's been great. I have no complaints about this. <laughs> did you get pulled over? No, we have a better film to put on here. Why don't you steam the glue side? We are. We, we jump back and forth. So, the trick to removing this film, one, I usually get rid of this big plastic handle. I'm not a fan of it at all, but we're getting a different steamer anyway soon. Um, so, warm, one, like it's, it's actually cooler outside right now and it's all rainy, so perfect day to do nice ceramic film on my car but steam one side of it to kind of warm it up and then if you keep moisture against the like kind of right in between here it's gonna help keep the glue sticking to the film <laughs> unless you do that that just left a lot of glue behind um, it helps the film stick to the to the tent rather than stick to the glass when you do the removal. But that's why you want to kind of warm up ahead of time. I might just get sick of this and just pull the whole thing off. It, it's like, these are pretty pretty normal removals for me. I hate, these are they're just time consuming. I hate doing them, especially on my own car. Like, I, this morning I'm like, man, I don't want to do a removal. We're still going to be doing 50. That's the thing, too. We're doing the exact same percentages. 50 has been really, like, for, for my clients, it's been a great shade to show people. So, it used to be the other way around where I'd show them 35, but 35 is always kind of a dark shade to show somebody on a windshield. Most of my clients go with 50. Um, and then if they want to go darker, you just say like, oh, hey, it's going to look much darker than this. And then they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I want a darker look than that.
No other cars today. Nope, we just got it set up for this one. Uh, my phones have been actually pretty dead. So, I haven't had... Like, this time of year, it happens. It, it wasn't happening, it wasn't happening, and then it, it all of a sudden happened, where it's just like, hmm, <laughs> where did all the business go? So, these are the slowdowns that I'm used to seeing. Thirty-five on a windshield is the best in my opinion. I like it. I like it a lot. But when you also use when you use um your vehicle as a demo vehicle and then you also have like family driving it too, I that's where I'm like, eh, I'll go a little bit later on that. Do you know if X or do you know if Geo will have anything lighter than the 50? Okay, so I talked to him about this, and their marketing is a little confusing. Um, they're, they're not, as far as I know, they're, they have no plans on releasing a higher tier 70%. I think that's a little bit of a mistake. Um, but... What he told me was, if you look at the spec sheets, their 70% is like a premium 70 already. So it's just kind of in the Pro Nano line, but they call it Pro Nano 70 Ultra. I feel like, oh, we still do have steam coming off. So... If somebody wants to get Apex, and then they want to do 70%, then you sell them the the 70 Ultra. I think it's kind of a mistake because it, it's like, that's a harder thing to explain to somebody. It's already kind of like a top tier one though, so he doesn't see a point other than branding for that. But I, I'm a little, I'm a little wishy-washy on that. But I, I get the point. So, yeah, probably no no 70% specifically in Apex, but it's kind of because they already have one. slow going I totally didn't want this to be all like steamed up that's why I put like some I should have put tape over it but now it's all kind of steamed up oh well we tinted this thing like 50 times before it'll be fine When you put Apex on a heat box, is there a difference? Yeah, absolutely. So, my we'll, we'll go over that in a little bit. Once I get this windshield removed, I have uh, I have my heat box demo. Some of you guys have seen this, especially in like the videos and stuff. But we're gonna put Apex on here, and then we're gonna see how it compares to the rest of them. So. Please don't destroy the perfect windshield. I think I think it's too late for that. I think we're already we're already there. There's no saving this one. I managed to retitle my Walmart video a little bit, and it's doing so much better. That that video is such a good illustration on why I don't like cheaper ceramic films. I wish I had like a clarity meter though. I wish that's a thing. I don't know if that's a thing. Actually, I don't know how that would work in direct sunlight. 
Do you get good glare reduction of the 50 over the 35? Uh, it's not as nice. You get a little bit. 50 is pretty easy to see through. So, while you do get it, in my opinion, bright headlights are still bright headlights. So, it wasn't until I put, like, 35 that I really was like, okay, this is, this is, like, perfect. So, for glare reduction, 35 is great, but, it, man, it's a dark look for a windshield. What ceramic would you recommend, and how much is it for a 40 roll, if you know? Um, well, the ones that I like to use are either uh, Pro Nano Ceramic and probably this Apex right here. There are a couple of other ones um, from companies like Tint Depot or Sun Distributing. Both of those companies have good, good films as well. Is Tint Depot film generic? No. <laughs> Actually, it's... this. So this is what drives me crazy. It's the opposite, but they have reasons why they have to sell it under Tint Depot. I can't tell you exactly what it is. You can talk to them. Um, but they sell actually, they sell good films. They're just not allowed to sell them under their names. They have reverse branding. What is the price for a 36 by 100 ceramic at Geo? Uh, you can check it out on the website. You can either go to GeoShield USA or, uh, TintStuff. MyTintStuff.com. Last little bit, man. I tell ya. For as much steam as I have on the inside, it is. Do they not have 35 in it? No, they do. They have 35 in Apex. They've got the major shades. Uh, it's it's brand new too, so they'll probably be adding it. But it's such a. A handful of shops are going to do real well with, with a film like this. This isn't necessarily, like, their biggest client base, I don't think. So, you know, people have a an interesting enough time selling Pro Nano, and now we're going a step beyond that. Oh, this, this little... Good God... Yeah, we're getting the Jiffy 4000. I'm not super stoked about it, but I, I don't know. I got annoyed with this exact steamer that doesn't work anymore. So this one, this one's fine and works well enough. I just went to do a removal on a windshield not too long ago, and the, the one that I was using completely died on me. It just didn't start steaming. And I'm like, well, I have zero time to go get a new one. So, thankfully, I, uh, thankfully, it was a windshield, so I was able to peel it that way, and just brute force all the glue, but, yeah, I, I don't know. Jiffies are really reliable. They're just, I don't know. I'm getting one with a plastic handle. That metal thing drives me nuts. I'm probably just going to remove the plastic handle entirely, too. Alright, good enough. Let me shut this steamer off and take it out. This is the worst part about redoing a windshield. It's just the cleaning. If the film removed clean... Ah, uh, so much better. But it doesn't. 
So you gotta suffer through all that. All right, now the next fun part is gonna be like scraping. How do you get glue off a windshield if you can't scrape it? On a rear windshield, uh, you gotta use uh, adhesive removers. Front windshields are fine. Rear windshields are something different. You might be able to. Um, where's the cat? I think this is what I did the last time. I used the housing again. Because this kind of stays out of my way. So that's nice. And then it'll keep everything kind of at least a little bit more moisture safe. We could tape up a little bit more, too, if we wanted to. Ew! Should have opened a sunroof. Is a 36 enough for most windshields? Yeah. What do you think of... Uh, Tint Depot films, not sure if they're generic and I should buy. Yeah, we already answered that. Uh, they're, they're, they have good films, they're just under Tint Depot branding. They take... <laughs> I don't know how much I can say. So, Tint Depot is actually uh, part of a much larger dis distribution company. They're just, uh, they're not allowed to sell those films necessarily so I can't tell you what it is but they have good films but that's why very early on I also didn't want to bring Tint Depot film in here because like it, it's one of those little little things for me the film brand that you carry isn't going to make or break your business but it's about that little extra there for me. So I want a company that has some more solid film branding if I'm gonna carry them uh, under my company. So if you're like, you know, like I've been tinning for a lot of shops and their clients never knew what film they were installing. It was just like, if anything they'd ask, carbon ceramic died, but that was like, few and far between. What, <laughs> what film brand would you say that it's closest to? Uh, it's a world, worldwide brand on this earth. <laughs> what did you spray? Oh, this is, so this is ATR. I don't spray this on anything except windshields and uh, front windshields and back windshields. So, thankfully I don't have a ton to remove. See that? See how it's just kind of melting off? So you gotta let it soak in some of the areas. So like where wherever the film pulled really fast, that's spots that left a lot of glue behind. Everywhere we took our time and then slowly peeled and, and there was only like little bits left behind. Those will come off way, way quicker. But this is a this is a not not very fun game. Because you either move fast, and then you're left peeling a lot of glue. Or you go slower. And then you just waste a lot of time. Or at least you feel like you do. Been trying to sit my windshield six times now. I can't manage to shrink the top corners. I watch many of your videos, but I still can't get it done. Any tips? I mean, the videos are about as, as good, of a, good of a tip as you can get. What kind of vehicle are you working on? I can tell you if it's like a really difficult one or if it's pretty standard. Windshields are gonna be your 
honestly tougher than most back windows. You haven't talked about GME? Oh, what, did GME do something crazy today? It's been doing a lot of nothing. It's It's been like holding steady. I literally haven't sold anything. I've just been sitting in it for a long time. <laughs> I checked it earlier, it wasn't doing anything either. Did something happen? Um, What's the best ceramic? Uh, oh, what's <laughs> what's up, Tim Pro? How you doing? Oh, dude, I gotta tell you, I caught part of not when it was live. I saw your live stream that was on Facebook. That is way cool. I like what you're doing. Your setup's really nice. I remember seeing your setup before, but like the way that you're doing the live stream, it's really good. Um, you should, uh, this is a little comment too, because I remember we talked a little bit about it in the, in the clubhouse. Um, you should be able to enable live streaming on your, um, you should be able to enable live streaming on your YouTube channel with under a thousand subs. Over a thousand subs is monetization. So you should be okay. Unless it's something really weird for your channel that I don't know what. Because like, Look at Sun Distributing. They have live streaming on their channel. They definitely don't have a thousand subs. So you should be okay. Uh, we're doing the Apex though. But yeah, I saw that. I, I've seen like a handful of people breaking into live streaming with Window Tent. It's really cool. Oh yeah, he's got a lot of helpful tint videos too. Like re uh, panel removal stuff. He always comes in here and tells me I should remove stuff. So if you want to see how to remove stuff, go to Tim Pro's channel. He'll tell you much better than I could. <laughs> I'm going to tint my windshield, but I don't have access to a silk rope. You don't have access or you don't want to go buy one before you do it. <laughs> Yes, you can shove a towel in there. Um, that's it. Soak ropes just, they work better um, for like getting in those tight spots. But I mean, you can try and shove like a, a bath towel and stuff in there, just as long as you protect everything. And some, some windshields like are totally fine to just not, but with all the electronics on modern cars, you never know when you're gonna have a problem. So, I'd suggest doing something. Oh, God, I can't see my screen. Does ATR have an aggressive smell? Uh, it's, it's not the worst. It's got, it definitely has a smell to it. It's not a super pleasant smell, but as far as adhesive remover smells go, ATR was one of the better ones. I did see, though... Um, this new, well, I don't think it's new. Some people are using upholstery cleaner, uh, which to me sounds like the magic cure-all because stuff that I can spray that'll remove the tint and also be safe on all the paneling and whatnot. Yes, please. I have to find out. This is, this is why you guys need to keep an eye out in the Facebook group. Um... Or some of the other Facebook groups, too. I don't remember where it was mentioned, but I screenshotted it so I can bring it up. It was like automotive, adhe or automotive uh, 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 upholstery cleaner, like foaming upholstery, upholstery cleaner. It's supposed to be super great. How do you like the 10? Uh, they did it. They made a good, a good GoPro again. <laughs> the 9, I don't, like when I... I don't, I'm assuming they would have adjusted the colors somehow, but I was also streaming a different way. When I got the nine, the nine looked worse. I don't, I don't know why, but now I'm, I'm doing HDMI out off of the 10. I think it's way better. It's, it's not exactly like 
the image quality isn't significantly better. It's a step up and it's smoother. If you enable 60, it's actually smoother looking. So it's worth it for me to keep. If anybody's looking to buy one, um, e either, I don't know, the nine might be fixed. I just don't know enough about the nine. Um, I may have to buy the mod cover because last time I had way too much echo. Um, yeah, mics are, mics are different. They're a little tricky. Like, I mean, there's, there's definitely shop echo in here. Are you talking about echo? Like, I remember uh, in part of the stream, I think you had the audio on your phone. Maybe it was wrong about that. I don't know. But if you had audio on your phone, definitely turn that off. Daniel Rayner super chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. Super. Magandu Magameo Buntag Kuya Master Matt. I think he just cursed me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Daniel Rayner, thank you for the five. How you doing? I'm I'm doing okay. I'm cleaning glue off my own windshield, and it's annoying because I don't like the idea of missing something on my own windshield. Then I gotta live with it. Then every time I demo it, if it's not pristine, I'm gonna be upset. I'm like. Almost the worst. Ew, did we just rip through it? Ugh, this towel. See, it doesn't like adhesive removers either, so little squeezy blades and stuff like that will just kind of like rip, rip it apart. It doesn't rip a hole, but whatever this stuff is messes up the surface of it. All right, I think we're gonna give it one more scrub down um, before we go to install it, but mo everything looks like it's at least removed enough. And then we'll, we'll spray it down, we'll give it a good scrub, squeegee a couple times, and then we'll install it. So now we can move to the outside and actually prep the outside. All that just to get to this part. So it's a no-go on the dash protector? Yeah. Yeah, it's been a no-go ever since I've had it. I like it a lot, but I don't want to spend $130 on a new one every month. So as long as they can refine it, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do when it gets destroyed though. I know like soak shield and a towel, but I'll be a little sad. Is this your car? It is. We're finally testing out Apex. So a lot, a lot of these products though, they're like, they're like, they're from installers that have good ideas and then trying to execute, like they just, people don't have a lot of resources, so. You know what I mean? You're not going to a Super duper. Tanner super chatted $4.99. Just started tinting earlier this month. Got a lot of pointers from nice. your vids and live streams. Thanks. Aw, you're very welcome. Ooh, 
is that? Ah, oh, that monitor. One covers just enough of the other one that I can't read it. Read the edge, and that's where the names are. Uh, Chano with the five, thank you. Uh, that's really cool. Got a lot of pointers from your vids and live streams. Just been tinning for a month. Very cool. Thank you so much for the five. I appreciate it. Do a 35? No, we're not going to do 35. I actually have to live with this, and I really don't want to retin it again. Where are my cheats? Oh, they're all the way down here. Da, 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 da. So on the last couple of removals that I've had this towel for, like here, I've taken it off after I've done the removal and I've just hosed it off. The underside still gets a little wet and it'll sit kind of damp. So like the top side they say is like waterproof, but I don't know. It doesn't seem like it. Sweet. Well, you know, I guess while that is drying, we can bring some films over here. So somebody asked about carbon. Um, so that's my ceramic. So we can do the 5% carbon. So I'm just going to pull this out of the box too, or just leave the box over here. Um, but this, this is the Apex. So this is their 20%. I'd like to see the 70 versus the 50 Apex. Okay, we'll drop a few. We'll drop a few in front of the heat box uh, for kicks and giggles. So I have to open up the 50 as well. But I have the 20 right now, mostly because, uh, or that's, that's the first one that I've tried, because all my other films on there are 20. It's the, it's the question I get the most about. So my, all my slides are 20%. 20% in, in every film to kind of give you a good apples to apples comparison. But, they put the 50 right in the middle. They look like they did a hell of a job <laughs> strapping this up. Oh, I don't want to rip the boxes either. One, four, five, six. So if you get Apex, they might put six lines of tape, which if you know anything about shipping tape, this shit adds up. All right, so this is the 50. Five ceramic, do I have to unbox all of them? You guys gonna make me do that? And then you have the individual ones on the inside. See, I don't wanna do this 500 times. And then they're probably, yep, they're all gonna be sleeved too. Unboxing new film is probably one of the most obnoxious things. It's Cause like, you're like, oh, I gotta go through this again. So. But I understand why they do it. They have to do it because they want that film to get to you. Very nice. So this is going to be our first look at the 50. We'll go slowly. Bing. Cool. Nice and clean. Ooh. It's got a very slight blue to it. Interesting. That's a 50. Yeah, we're gonna, okay, we'll get, we'll unbox all of them. So I, I want to see 50 compared to 35, definitely. Well, so we'll actually, yeah, because we're doing both of those. It's got a very slight blue tinge to it. So this is 35. 
Is that box 20%, 24 by 25 feet? Is that a test box? I would like to buy that. No, it's mine. If you want a box, then uh, contact Gio. They'll hook you up. <laughs> but I actually need it. It's mine. I mean, if you want to bring your vehicle in to get it tinted, that's another thing. All right, so this is the 35. This, I think, is where the Pro Nano fell like the most short, because the Pro Nano 35 is a little bit on the warm side. So with the Apex, we're going to see if it still looks warm or not. Definitely not. Definitely not warm. So this is 35 compared to, this is going to be 35. Pro Nano, sorry, I'll try and show this as good as I can, but like, this is very difficult. There's a big difference between those two for sure. 35 in Apex, I like this, this looks good. So, 35, 50, five carbon, 20. All right, let's, uh, let's check out Oh, we're gonna have to unbox the five too, aren't we? Because five is really where you see. We gotta unbox this one too. All right, fine. I'm, I'm just thinking in my head. It's like, what you're gonna be able to tell with five is kind of like, that's where you get the most color because it's got to be the darkest. So, let's uh let's pull this. And then we're going to see huh. Peeled clean on a couple of the other ones, not quite on this one. Probably cuz it was sitting on here for so long. Ooh, that is just very clean looking. It's like starts going, I don't know. I'll let you guys be the judge of this one. It's got a little tone to it, but it's generally like very charcoal leaning a little bit, little bit to the warmer side, but it's real minimal. So that's cool. All right, now I can put them in front of the box. This is what you guys really want, right? How much heat? Oh yeah, we put it over there. Let's check it out. Okay, so we have some Apex films here. We have some carbon too. This is my heat lamp demo. Many of you have seen this in uh, some of my recent videos and this is a BTU meter. So the idea here is really simple, 250 watt, infrared heat bulb, that's what you feel. Uh, and then the BTU meter, uh, this helps you guys like, so in, you're like, oh wow, it's so hot or oh, it's so cold. This kind of tells you what's actually coming off the bulb from the distance that it's at. So I set it up so this basically knocks to about 300. If I move it a little back, if I move it a little forward, this number will change. But I put it in one spot and then the the, Percentages, they all stay the same. So if I were to move this closer, and then it gives me a different heat reading, across the board, that's gonna remain the same, um, basically. So 300 seemed like a pretty good round number. Um, so when we go to the dyed, uh, 308, back to clear, is still 308. That's because dyed film doesn't block out uh, really any infrared heat. You still feel a lot of heat coming off that bulb, but, the bulb's not as bright, and you get UV protection. So there, there is benefits, you, aesthetics, stuff like that. But when you're talking about heat reduction, you go to the 20% carbon, that number went from 300 to 158. Just boom, boom, pretty awesome. So what you feel is about half the heat that you felt before. 
When you go to the ceramic, so this is the pro nano ceramic right now. This is an apex. Uh, we're at 90, 90, 91 right now. So 150 to 90, all the way back to 300, back down to 90. So you get about a 75% heat reduction uh, with my, with the ceramic that I've been using for, for quite a while now. So uh, somebody did ask about, before we break into the apex, somebody did ask about carbon. So we're at least going to do like, if you go fully dark carbon, what does that look like on a heat lamp? 70, wow, look at that. 72. So you get a substantial amount of heat reduction even going from the 20%. That's because the more carbon that you can pack into the film, the more heat reduction that you're going to get. But carbon also colors the film. So you can't have like a light carbon uh, and block out a bunch of heat because there's just, there's nothing else. Ceramic is lighter and then you have to color it in a different way. So then we can stay lighter on the films and still get a significant amount of heat reduction. But knocking the meter all the way down to 70, that was cool. Um, so let's jump into the 20% apex here. So this is apples to apples, uh, ceramic to ceramic. So we have 90 right now. When we jump over to here, we have 300. We put that film in between. Where are we at? 35, <laughs> I like it. We're at 35, 36 right now. And then when you pull it closer, when you pull it farther, it's actually shrinking. It's starting to shrink right now. Staying in front of that heat lamp, that puts out a lot of heat. Oh, wow, okay, cool. It just turned off and then, I don't know if I turned it off or not or if it just got too hot and then shut itself off. We, we've been leaving that bulb on for a little bit now. I don't want it to like completely get stupid hot. Black Magic bought it down to 33. Yep, yep. But if you remember, Black Magic had an incredible amount of haze to it. So going from where are we at? Meters at 320. So let's put it back to kind of where we are because things have been jiggling around. 308. Drop it in front. Yeah, we're about 30, 34. 35, so that's about a 90%, 95% heat reduction right there off of the, the 20%. Sweet. So the idea here is now that, you know, you put that up against the Walmart film. <laughs> what, you're, what you're hoping from a higher quality film like that is, uh, is that it's going to stay clear while blocking a significant amount of heat. So let's, let's try the 50. Let's see what the 50 does. So now we're much lighter. BTU meter, 308. And then we drop this down. 30, ooh, look at that. You get slightly better. I'd say that's within a margin of super. Not like a margin of Cameron error, Landry but like it's very close. Dollars and 99 30. Pro Nano that's 5%. Cool. Pro Nano 5%. Okay, I will. Thank you for the 5. I will go grab the Pro Nano 5% and we'll do a test. Let's do the 35. How is that better? <laughs> It's, you're talking like, like literally, if I slightly jar this, this thing back and forth, a couple of numbers isn't going to be, isn't going to be much. I don't know how it's slightly better, but it is. So I want to make sure this is back to, back to about 300, and then we're going to drop. This is the 35. Let's see what the 35 does. Holy smokes, man. Okay, now that is way more significant. This, the 35... We're dropping all the way down to 22. So just to be fair, let me grab uh, the 20 again. Yep, 20 is still around 34. So we're, we're, we're dead on where we were before. So everything's reading accurately to, to where it was before. Uh, I don't know. They're, they're just, they'll be, you know, they're, they're different lines. 
they get they have a different amount of ceramic and coloring added to each one. Um, that's just what the specs read right there. So when the idea though is like there's there's still like from 20 to 35, they're in this window here where I mean, are you going to be able to tell one to the next? When you're, when you're jumping from 90 all the way down to 30, again, you're cutting that number uh, literally in half, if not a little bit more. You're like a little bit more than half. So starting, that's what I like about this BTU meter here, is when I set it up for 300, going from 300 to, to 300, going from 300 to 150, that's about a 50% heat reduction right there. When you go from 300 to 88, that's about a 75% heat reduction. And now you're dumping, when you, when you whittle that number lower and lower and lower, we're going from 80 to like 35, that's another 50% heat reduction right there. But on the grand scale of things, you are already down here. So the lower you go, the less difference that you're really gonna notice. So those little numbers aren't gonna matter quite as much. But I'm gonna grab, let me grab the 5%. Um, so as far as why 35 would be slightly better, I don't know, but I'm stoked on my car. Um, so the, we need, I do have Helios 5% too as well. Um, where is my Pro Nano? I know I got a, please tell me. I know I got one. We've used it recently. I just have, they're so all over the place. All right, let's go on a little field trip. Let's uh, hunt down some 5% Pro Nano Pro Classic 50. Pro Nano 50. Are these, these are new boxes. Pro Classic, Pro Nano 5. I knew I had a box somewhere. All right, let me pull these over here. Look at that. Thank you for the five. You're making the unboxing actually worth the time. Because, <laughs> again, we have to cut through all the tape. And then we have inside tape to cut through. And we have a sleeve to remove. And then I still have to go tint my car. Oh, that's Pro Classic. Pro Nano. Da, da, da. One, two. Might be getting faster at that. Give the old tint shake. All right. Lexan. <laughs> uh, I actually don't have Lexan sitting around here right now. It has been very requested, though. So we'll probably get around to it eventually. I just don't think I'm going to leave it on my own car. That's what the Facebook group's good for. You guys can install it. See how long it lasts on your car. All right. So, meter is at three. Oh, come on. They put one more piece of tape on this one. Probably for good reason. All right. So this is the five, oh, it's heavy. So let me turn this on. Meter is at three. Drop this in front of it. So we're at 60, we're at 68 right now. So no tint, 317, 68. This is Pro Nano Ceramic, cool. That's a significant drop especially from the 20. So slightly more coloring in there. That, that one makes more sense. The 35 to the 20, that doesn't make as much sense to me, but hey, it is what it is. So let's put this back. Use the Omnique and... So the back, back a while ago, I did I tried the Omnique and it actually did really well, but the film customer update like eight months later, it didn't last. Put that on the front windshield. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, so we need the 50. 
Is there any more questions about the heat box before we kind of move on? This will be sitting here in the background, but that's kind of a, a good overview for you guys. If you're getting Pro Nano 5 or Carbon 5, you actually be uh, pretty good overall. You, get, you definitely get more from Pro Nano, but when you're dealing with the super dark percentages, not quite as much of a difference. 35. No, we want to do 35, but we're going to do 50. A heat box video of all the films would be awesome. I agree, it would be pretty awesome to do. Did you do Apex 5? <sighs> no. <laughs> no, we didn't do Apex 5 on the heat box. Did we? No, we did Pro Nano 5 on the heat box. So Pro Nano was, remind me, like 68 or something? So let's, three, 309, 310, this is, ooh, this is their best. This is 20 right now. So you get the best of the best with the, wow, look at that. It's already got a spot in it, a little heat spot right there. <laughs> From where it was actually starting to shrink the film, because this is like, dude, this is a hot bulb. You keep your hand in front of there, this glass, like, it, it gets toasty real quick. So, Apex 5 was about 20. Um, Apex 20 was about 35. Apex 35 was about 25. And then 50 was a little bit different. So what is this? This is 30. This is the 50 right now. This is like 30. 22. It, man, this gets so confusing. So it's like ping-ponging back and forth between 20 and, and, and like 35. But there's a, so there's a lot that goes into making films. There's probably more than we know that goes into making like a 35 versus a 35 versus a 50 percent. But hey, I don't know. The idea is that it's going to look good and perform well regardless. So I've got 25 foot rolls to play around with and uh, hopefully we don't have to do this in like three different tries to get this done right the first time. Is this the vehicle you did the perfect windshield? It is. I've had Pro Nano 50%. I've been rolling around with it for the past year. Uh, I've been very happy with it. So I'm happy to be slightly more happy with this. We also have it on the sunroof. Um, I don't think I'm going to do the sunroof today. I'm really like... I don't even know if I want to do... The doors? <laughs> Mostly because I have front quarters. If they were just roll downs, it's kind of like whatever. But adding those front quarters, I'm just like, man, I don't feel like doing it today. The idea is, yeah, we're going to be redoing everything to Apex. Except for the back windows here, we're probably going to uh, have a 70% Pro Nano. Because I don't, I don't want to darken up my the rear my vehicle at all. I love having it, I love having 20%, um, like factory 20, mostly because it's like, it's, it's a selling tool. So if somebody comes in with a truck and they're like, yeah, you know, I have a factory tint on the back and it's like, oh cool, I do too. Let me show you mine and then we can get, you have a good reference for what you're used to. And then you can see 35 and 50, and then figure everything out. Do the doors. Yeah, but it's more work. <laughs> is this your shop? Yes, it is. 
See, this only gets done on days like this. There's no way I'm gonna have a full schedule and then still get my own vehicle done. So this gets done when I have extra, actual extra time to do it. Even today, I'm like, man, I don't wanna come in today. <laughs> I have a 99 G20 to tint soon. Are you familiar? Mm, I couldn't tell you about the G20. I'd have to see it. I Offhand, I don't remember. Lazy Day, oh, they're the best. I have factory privacy glass and put another 35 on top of it. Yes, you can see out through your windows at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 35 is good. 35 over 20 is not like blacking out the rear. It's when you do like 20%, we'll bring it down to five, and then five over that will make it even darker. But I didn't want to do 35 over the factory because it is darker in a way that's harder to explain. So I just like keeping it very cut and dry for people. It's like, what do you have on the back, 20? And then if I have to explain that I have 35 over 20, which I think is a great look, it's just, it gets annoying. Oh, I forgot. We haven't even shrunk this film yet. This is brand new. I'm just shrinking it like any other film. That's cool. So what I've been told is this will be very similar to C2 in terms of shrinking and feel and everything. It's not as similar to Pro Nano. I don't think I can, I'll be able to tell that off of just doing this windshield because it's really not a big windshield to shrink. But if you were to, I don't know, as far as right now goes, I couldn't tell you. Um, I couldn't tell you, like, if you were like, hey, shrink this film. I, I, if I shrunk it, I wouldn't be able to tell you what it was. It, it's going pretty easy. This is a wet spot. <laughs> Thankfully, it's a wet spot right in the middle because I just creased the hell out of it. It's a rainy, humid day today, so for as long as we left that sitting there, the middle was still wet. I'm gonna fix that in a sec. I wanna cut that center out before I do. Do you... Do you think it's a good idea to only offer Pro Classic and Apex? If it works for your business, I wouldn't do it. It's so extreme. Use the heat lamp to shrink it. <laughs> but doing Pro Classic against just like your, your top tier ceramic, like you kind of need a you really need an in between for most people because it's like you're you're like budget versus high performance. There's so many people that buy mid tier luxury sedans and stuff. Like that's where those come in. It's not just Ferrari versus Nissan. <laughs> Oh, this wet windshield is giving me problems. I think drips from the top might have come down, actually. It was probably dry, and then it's just my whole roof is wet. All this down here will go way smoother. I'm planning on only carrying carbon and ceramic. Yeah, some people do that. That's a that's like so carbon's at this point where it's like it's 
price competitive with, with a good dyed film. It's not too far off. So those can be like, yeah, I don't install anything except carbon and ceramic films. And there's a significant reason to go to a ceramic film over a carbon film. So, but you are getting heat rejection across the board in that. So it's more of just like a, it's a good point for your business in general. I'm going to have to get used to rainy days again. It's been a minute. We've had so many nice warm days lately. Then what, today's the first day of fall? Man, it sure looks like fall outside right now. Just gloomy, gloomy crap going on. Just don't want it to stick. There we go. Um, what was that? How much does 50% windshield affect tint shades and the rest of the vehicle as far as a percentage? 50% will make the front look a little bit darker, but it's it's not like super crazy. And angles matter. Angles matter a whole lot. So it doesn't really make, wow, I just picked that up. Oh, and I moved it. Wow, it's a, uh, get points for that. So if you're looking through, like if you, if you squat down, or depending on the vehicle, and you're looking through both shades, just like immediate, the windshield has nothing to do with that. When you're standing here looking into your car, um, the windshield is now shading the seats, and it gives you a darker appearance. Um, same thing with 35 and everything. Yeah, I, perfect comment. It's like having a sunroof open or closed. That's exactly what tinting the windshield is like. It just reduces the light that's hitting the rest of the cabin, so it's going to make everything kind of seem darker, but angles still matter. So when you tint like a standard cab truck, um, you have like the windshield right there, uh, you have the rear glass and you just have the doors. So when you do the front doors in 20, the vehicle's already kind of sitting up higher. Those front doors, really, the whole thing's gonna seem a little bit lighter. But when you can, when you have like a full size and you can look into a darker cabin, it's going to feel a little bit darker. I have 50% on my vehicles and it's not much darker at all. Yeah, it's not going to be. 50 isn't made to be much darker. So what I like about, what I like about 50 is it, it kind of, especially during the daytime, um, it blends going from a clear windshield to 50 it kind of blends your the black into your windshield a little bit more but it does that with like on a sunny day or something like when you got your car outside you get a lot of natural reflections from the sky clear windshield versus 50 percent the 50 percent just kind of darkens it up enough to where a lot of those reflections and stuff kind of make your vehicle seem a little bit darker than it might actually be That's why, like, when I show show clients, when I show clients 50% on my windshield, also the vehicle kind of has like this more aggressive stance to it. It's got bright white and then dark accents. So people just kind of see it and they have this overall impression that the car is just a little bit darker anyways compared to like their own. And then I'll tell them, I'm like, yeah, I got the same percentage on the back that you do. And they're like, well, why does yours seem darker? It's like, well, it, it's a number of things. 
I feel like you should try the Horizon feature on your camera. Ever since you mentioned it, I can see every time you tilt your head. <laughs> we did. Um, I'm a little iffy. So Horizon Lock sounds really cool, uh, but it, I think it's more for when you're actually recording. It puts it into linear mode too, so the, the lens gets a little bit zoomed in in order for it to be able to do it. But I kind of want to, like, I want to play around with it for a little bit, but the l little bit that we did before wasn't quite as good as what, is that, what I'd hope. Because it seems like, unless you're recording, it's still treating it like a, it treats it like a preview. And with a preview, it just doesn't care as much. So it kind of has this, like, when you tilt your head, like, 25% or, like, uh, 45, whatever, it, it kind of like locks to that, so it'll be here, and then it'll like jump here, and then it'll jump here. You must have a, st I like that you use the white background to cut. Oh, <laughs> thank you. So, the, Steady hand part, no, my, my hand gets shaky as ever. I just cut a whole bunch of windshields out so you get used to it. To, to put it on, um, tilt the roll sideways. That way it gets like really close to the glass. I, that took a little bit of practice. You get better with it. I'd probably be pretty decent at pinstriping a vehicle now. Get your shit together, GoPro. They've done pretty good with the 10. I give them credit for that. I'm keeping it. I return the 9 right away. But I think the 10, if you, so you got, this is kind of like a, if you turn up the quality on the live stream, you'll notice a little bit better image. It's not really when you're just looking at it in 480 or something, but it's also smoother. If you go back to some of the old streams, 60 FPS on this thing is way smoother than 60 FPS on the 8. I don't really know why. It just is. There's also no more weird shadow in the middle, so I like that. What are your thoughts on Lexan? I get asked that a lot. Lexan, Lexan has its place in, in like the, the budget shop market. Yeah, fairly decent for the price. So don't expect a lot of customer support. Um, you're never quite sure how long is it, it's going to last, but there are a lot of guys using it. Um, and it is kind of difficult. Like the ones that I've played around with were more difficult to shrink. People have said their better stuff is a little bit easier to work with, so that's cool. I haven't played with it yet. But if you're looking to save some, some good money on film, uh, that's that's one way to do it. I just personally don't wouldn't trust my own business with it. Okay, so I need put a lot of crap in here. I feel like because of the price, people really want it to be a good film. That's it. yeah, definitely. I mean, we all do on the inside. We all want to spend no money and get the best. But that's not how most things work. <laughs> so. I mean, so I've used my, uh, my Pro Classic as a, as a good example. It's, when you're talking about, like, you spend... Like 200 bucks on a roll of Lexan or a roll of Geo, you spend 100 bucks on a roll of Lexan. So it's like, yeah, I'm saving 50% film and I'm getting carbon. Well, the thing is, when you do tint jobs for, I don't know, 250 bucks, that is a real problem if you have an issue. So that that film cost all of a sudden becomes pretty negligible. 
It'll it'll escalate. It'll escalate very quickly. <laughs> so y you got to put like all the money that you saved into some type of like fund for for problems because if you, if you all of a sudden have like all the cars having issues, then you are you're like royally screwed. I think we're doing pretty good here. Johnson's compared to SunTech. I've I've never really played around with Johnson or SunTech very much at all. Johnson's film is like one of those things that always escape me. I don't know. Them, Matico, not super familiar with anything that they offer. Have you ever had a bunch of cars for warranties all at once? <laughs> I was, uh, was going to mention somebody, and then I realized they're the one that's asking. Yeah, it was really funny. So uh, maybe you shouldn't mention their actual name. Ooh, but there's a super here. I'll get back to it. Super duper. Jose Rios super chatted $9.99. Jose. Did a C6 Veta tried using Geo. It was a pain and doesn't shrink good at all. Nano ceramic. Switched to Lex and Mega Max, got it done in 15 minutes. Yes, the Corvette back window. Dang. No tinted Wow, that's uh, that's some strong words there. Thank you for the 10. Um, C6 Corvette tried it with Geo. It was a pain to shrink. Doesn't shrink good at all. I wouldn't say it doesn't shrink good at all. I think they're. Uh, what was it? Just tried it with Geo. It was a pain. Oh, that was the V Nano. Oh, that's why I have no idea. Switched to the Mega Max and got it done in 15 minutes. Oh, interesting. V Nano is the only Geo film that I haven't played around with. It's a budget ceramic. So, well, there you go. I thought we were talking Pro Nano versus the other ones, but I've actually never played around with the uh, with the V Nano ceramic. They have like a five-year warranty on it. And so that never fit into my business, so I never never even tried it. But thanks for the report. I appreciate the super. I've never tried the Mega Max and then the, the other one that people are asking about. But I feel like a lot of people are asking me because they want me to give a stamp of approval on it in a way. And I can only do that so much, so... Because it's like the question comes like, well, if you can save 50% film costs, why don't you use it in your own business? And the answer to that is it actually goes right back around to what I was going to talk about. Um, so <laughs> somebody in chat asked, have you ever had uh, to redo a bunch of cars? And yeah, I have. There's uh, one company that I'm still better at, uh, ASWF. <laughs> <laughs> I know they didn't want to mention them by name in their stream, but I sure will, because they drove me absolutely crazy. So there is a point in time where uh, we were we were getting like I think it was X XL, E X E L, not X Bell, but XL. Uh, we were getting that from ASWF, and we already had a fair amount of issues with it. Like, it was staticky, it was super curly. So just working with the film wasn't super fun uh, for those reasons. It, it shrank well, and it looked decent. 
So we brought it on. Uh, we saved a pretty decent amount of money. When when that was uh, that was definitely a, a big concern because we were doing wholesale window tinting. So we would go around from shop to shop, and we would we would install it. Um, so those film costs definitely add up. So that was one way we were saving, but that really bit us <laughs> bit us hard because we had uh, this problem called UV bloom. So what UV bloom is basically you put out a nice looking tint job, water sits in between the film and the glass, and then it crystallizes the glue. And then all of a sudden the customer comes back and it looks like there's a bunch of dirt specks and you're like, whoa, wait, what? So this was February. Jose Rios super chatted nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Jose, definitely going to give Pro Nano a try. I still don't think Nano should be that bad for me to switch back to Lex. And my dad loves Geo, and all he buys is Pro Nano and Carbon C two. Other Jose, thank you. <laughs> There's two. I always forget that. Uh, thank you so much for the ten. Definitely going to give Pro Nano a try. I still don't think V Nano should be bad for me to switch. Back to Lexum. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'd be a little confused why that's the case. But not all films, not all ceramic and uh, and carbon films are actually easy to work with. They've actually been notoriously uneasy to work with. But if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work. There's not much you can do. Thank you for the 10. All right, now let's go ahead and install this. So, uh, but back to back to UV blooming. Um, we would get these cars come back for like a solid month and like farther past that, but the bulk of things came back within the first month. We were just installing everything. We were having a good time. Then all of a sudden we had all these warranties that we had to do and it was literally like nonstop warranties for, for like a straight month. And and ASWF just gave us gave us a giant runaround. So they they gave us like I don't know some some of what they would tell us was like oh we're we're looking into the issue and then then they, we found out like they knew about it a while before and then I it really seemed to be like whatever issues people had like they they were only they they weren't seeking out any warranties they weren't giving anybody a heads up it was like we'll just handle all the actual problems that we have and cross our fingers that this isn't this isn't as bad as as what it might be so ooh this liner it's a little tricky to pull a little, a little strong. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm a firm believer in trying to go with a film that's not going to make you feel like ah, I hope it's okay. I'd much rather spend a little bit more money, charge a little bit more money, and get something that I I know is going to be solid. I just can't put that kind of risk anymore. Um, we have a problem with the Tesla windshield when we use ASWF, XL, XL, IRP, and my job was always complain about low angle haze. It's, uh, it's more of like an Asian technology, really. Um, ASWF, they I think they've improved some of their manufacturing, but like ASWF, Lumar, uh, SunTech, a lot of the, the American films, they had a hard time catching up with uh, with carbon and ceramic when that really hit the market, which is why I really think they tried to uh, downplay its benefits and now they're now they're catching up to it. But yeah, no surprises there. Where like so Eastman Eastman is a uh, is a chemical company and they have all the incentive in the world to keep dying window film. Not necessarily invest in uh, in carbon uh, carbon technology as much. E 
Uh oh. Did anybody see that SunTech post? They tinted it in 2017 and it already had a massive finger in it. It happens. I think every film has that problem one way or another. Some more than others. Um, the, the silver lining about that problem with SunTech though is at least they went with uh, to hopefully get some better support. Lumar and SunTech, or at least I know, I know Lumar, they're, they're under the same umbrella. But I know from firsthand all the shops that I would talk to about Lumar support, they, they had nothing bad to ever say about it. So if somebody ever had an issue with SunTech, or had an issue with Lumar, um, they, were, they were more than taken care of. They would get, they would get uh, like removal and retent, like whatever the, the problem was, it would get resolved. So they charge a super premium for their films, but at least they backed it up with that, so that's cool. Somebody was asking about my, or if I got my sample of Film Star or whatever that film was. <laughs> no. No, I don't think I'll be getting a sample of it. It was funny. I just saw a post yesterday. A bunch of people all got, got the new white label, white label brand from some particular company that shall not be named. Perfect windshield, I hope so. I don't know if this one's gonna be it, but there's a couple little little things that didn't make this feel quite as smooth. But we'll see, we'll see what this turns out like. Ooh, this is slipping and sliding all over the diggity dang place. That's nice. I like that on a windshield. The less I have to fight with a sticky windshield, the better. I just want to put it on and have it go where it needs to. Alright. Go slow here. If the tint touches the headliner, does it bring in contamination? It definitely can. I don't think it's just the game over, but they are fabric, so it just, if it's like brushing up against the top, yeah, you'll probably get something in it, but if it just like lightly grazes it, maybe not. I remember getting all types of contaminants and can't remember. Solar Star. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, I shouldn't give it any attention. I just thought it was funny. I remember. I remember something I was told a long time ago. A cheap. <laughs> I know some people who did this. Uh, a cheap. Woo. Horn scared myself. A cheap way for uh, for new films to kind of make their way out is uh, like to label them is bumper stickers. So you see a lot of white boxes with bumper sticker labels on them because they're, they're really cheap to get a bunch of them made. <laughs> Doesn't mean that the film's bad, but usually means it's a white box label for sure. All right, we got this in place.
<laughs> yeah, that's a good comment. <laughs> uh, I think I'm covered. I don't think it trailed away from me. This is pushing a lot over here. Um, no, I look good. 50 is so tough to tell. You're like right on the edge here. Are we? Yeah, we're good. Would you do a windshield strip? I'm not gonna throw one over here, but I used to do it. Windshield strips are great over full windshields too. They're, they're two different things. So, especially with 50, that, like, we're still in direct sunlight. Like, when it's, uh, when you get that, that strong afternoon glare, we're still flipping down our, our sun visors. So, having, having that windshield strip would definitely help with that. But they're kind of separate from each other. So, you can definitely do one over it. Even 35, 35 I still had issues. Um, it cut it down a significant amount of glare, but really the only thing that helps with that like really strong afternoon glare is a, is like five. <laughs> How do people deal with no visibility at night with window tint? I don't know. Ask them. I wonder the same thing. Somebody that wants to do like 5% windshields. I'm like, okay. I mean, they have to see some or else they wouldn't. I don't know. Maybe they just have really good GPS. crazy how no low angle haze and clear pro nano is i'm glad you like it that's cool yeah i've been really happy with it too that's really what it's about when you're going for a top tier film the less haze like that's when, when you introduce carbon and ceramic you get haze the more expensive the film the more improvements that they make the better that's gonna get so Hopefully this is actually worth it, worth getting. You get used to it? Ew, no. <laughs> oh wait, no, the 5%? Oh. <laughs> you know, so I've had this, I've had this running theory and some people have said, no, it's not like that. I don't know, I, I wouldn't know until I tried it. So when you have 5% on your sides and you have a light windshield, you have a lot of light coming in through your windshield, it's gonna make your sides, like your, your eyes never have a chance to adjust. You know, like when you walk in a dark room, your eyes ha never have a, a chance to adjust. So, when you get into, into a vehicle with 5% uh, with on the windshield and 5% everywhere else, I'm sure your eyes will adjust somewhat but it's still one of those things where it's like, mm. <laughs> I'm not gonna install it for somebody. I had a customer explain his, I had, I had a customer explain to me his glasses wouldn't transition after having premium ceramic on his windshield. Yeah, they won't, they wouldn't transition with anything on his windshield. There's still UV there, UV inhibitors. My transition glasses, they don't do anything in my car. But, that being said, there's that like good good discussion about five percent all the way around instead of leaving the windshield lighter. Yeah, there's that liability. <laughs> Trying to explain like why having a blackout looking windshield is actually 
more acceptable than, than not is, uh, yeah, that's a tough conversation. <laughs> so, so far so good. Yeah, this actually looks really nice. I'm happy with it. As long as I don't have anything major uh, in my driver's line of sight, we'll, uh, looks like we'll be good. I haven't seen anything though. I think I got a little bit more water I got to press out, but overall, I mean, we, we cleaned this windshield so much too. So as long as like, we didn't have anything somewhere like hiding super bad, then it should be okay. Eh, I got one little, little thing right there. That'll drive me a little crazy. I wonder if I can do something about that one. Have you heard about Audubon? Yeah, I've heard good things about them. I don't know much about them, but the things that I've heard was good. Like, I don't know where it's made. I don't know where it comes from. Uh, but they're, they're, again, one of those companies that kind of escaped, like Matico and Johnson's and whatnot. Uh, like, I just don't know much about them. Try to drive the blazer through an active volcano. Apex will keep you cool. That's the idea. It'll break all the other laws of physics. <laughs> all right, so I got one little guy. And as long as I can get this little guy out, I think we'll be home free. Fifteen is perfect on the front shield. I could see that. I had somebody asking me the other day, though. So I, I had somebody, man, whenever I take appointments that are last minute, there's always stuff with it. So somebody called about a, about like a GMC Savannah van. It was like a 2003. And I was like, yeah, actually, I got time to do a windshield. Bring it on in. And then it was like, oh, that's what that is. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that one. But then he was like, okay, cool. I want to do 20 on the windshield. And I'm like, no. <laughs> we settled on 35 for it. Um, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you can drive around with it. Yeah, you. It, I don't think for for the types of people that necessarily get it, like people that that care more about the styling on their cars they like having just like you know really dark setups i think for most of those people you're probably going to be okay as somebody said in chat with good headlights yes you need good headlights too but that being said as a, as a business again i don't want to take on that responsibility so you do you we teach you how to tint. If you want to do your windshield in 20%, then go do it yourself. <laughs> Not going to have a hand in it. Ah, there we go. There's some extra moisture. We can definitely get out. Huh? Huh? Looking pretty good. There we go. Yeah, I'm happy with this. This looks nice. There we have it. We got one little finger that we got to heat up. Then we got to use a different towel because this has little glue bits. Some guys do uh, no receipt, cash only. <laughs> and then they act like they never know the person again. If there's a problem, it's like, hey, whatever, whatever. They're not going to make that public, so I get that. I had a shop that got mad at me for asking about 50. Oh, interesting. And there's like, I know, I know firsthand some people that don't install anything below 70. This comes into your own personal shop ethics. Whatever you want to do, it's totally up to you. 
I have what I do. You can do what you do. CJ. CJ Ackerman super chatted two dollars. What yellow towels you use? CJ with the uh, with the two white yellow towels. Um, these aren't anything fancy. They're just the uh, the Costco ones, Kirkland brand. I gotta wipe off this dash. So this kind of seeps underneath it. And the last removal that I did with that towel, um, I removed it and I used a different towel. This is my car, so I just, I don't know, I didn't feel like doing that. So I risk it on my own car, it's fine. But this is probably a small mix of adhesive remover. This towel did nothing to keep the dish dry. No, it did. Um, it's just with the excessive amount of water and the removal and the retent, that's where you would want to change it if you're doing a removal. And then a retent, like, yeah. That towel size. <laughs> so most of the time I'm just tinning it. Um, so that's where I'll have the towel, that towel in place. But yeah, with, with how many times we sprayed it, yeah, that seeing that underneath, uh, yeah, you'd, you'd want to do a couple of them for every removal and retint that you do. So that's another reason why I'm, I'm not super fond of that one. Do you, do you sell uh, any online tinting courses? No, no, I do everything on the channel. There's, we might eventually do like a membership on the channel, but that would be, that'd be extra stuff that I could just throw a GoPro on that I wouldn't normally stream and then just kind of do it and then upload it to, to something like that but I, I don't have any specific courses. If I do, uh, we're probably, we I don't know, I'd release it for free on YouTube as well. Ooh, all right. I'm happy with this, this looks good. This is acceptable. Does the Korean towel work better? Um. I really like that one. I had a problem trying to get it in place. I probably just need to like slow down a little bit and like get a handle on the push stick and stuff because it's so big. A lot of it would bunch up like in the corners, but it is thinner. Um, I think I still had a similar type of water trail when you go to pull it. So if you use a decent amount of water, you'll probably still see it soak through. The, the OG soak shields, I think are probably the best towels that I've used. But I want them to curve to the dash, so if they can do that, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Is this better than the perfect windshield video that you made? Um, I don't know, I'm gonna let it dry out. It looks really clean. There might be something. I definitely didn't Alligator put as much Window care into this one as the other one. Gator! Look up what you could be on the hook for liability-wise, so at least you are making an informed decision with dark windshields. So, I mean, I, I did put a lot of care and time and whatever into it, but that video, that video was something a little bit different. Gator with five! Or was that more? Let's scroll up here. Alligator with a five, look up what you could be on the hook for liability-wise, so at least you're making an informed decision with dark windshields. That's a good one. Thank you so much for the five. I agree with that. Know your state laws, know what you're on the hook for, and then make an informed decision. 
um, on your own business. So there's no blanket rule um, for like, you know, what's acceptable and what's not when you're doing something like that. It's all just kind of like, these are what most shops have had to deal with. And then he makes a good point on what you could be uh, at the full extent of the law. So keep that in mind, definitely. I use a beach towel, works good. Nice, very nice. Have you ever tinted a tractor? No, I haven't. Um, is the smoke machine working? It didn't seem like it. I turned on the software though. Canon. I turned it on. It hasn't for any of the super chats yet, but let's see. Refresh this. Maybe it's just frozen. Quit. It just had an update. I didn't mean to click update it. Um, oh, I don't think it was connected. Now it might be. So for all of those, oh, um, huh. I think we have more problems uh, than not right now. Hang on. Oh, okay. My power went out actually. So I think now it'll work. I didn't realize that it messed that up too. So for all the super chats, woo! <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm. I should get my plotter today too. I just had a conversation uh, yesterday, last night actually, and I was like, the shipping hasn't updated since like the 16th, so there might be a problem with this one. And then they made a phone call and then literally this morning, everything updated and oh, it's out for delivery. So it had nothing to do with Plotter Depot. It had everything to do with FedEx doing whatever with the package. I don't know. But that was not a good one to randomly go missing. So uh, that should be here uh, today. And hopefully if it's in, if it didn't get, um, if it wasn't used as a football, everything should be okay with it. Well, we have a windshield done. No, we're not gonna do a strip. I'm thinking on these doors. I don't really feel like doing them, but I think we're going to. Thank you for using USPS. I like USPS for all the flat rate stuff. They're pretty solid with that. When you go outside of that, I've heard there's uh, there's some problems. I know some people hate USPS. They're, they all have problems. Like certain areas are better with certain companies. So like some people like FedEx, some people hate it. Some It just depends on where you live. All right, let's plug, let's plug this back in before I turn on some stuff. This is the, this is the mirror with the screen on it. There we go, put that back in. You know what I noticed too, is I don't think I ever screwed this mirror back in. Go figure. Because, what the heck? Come on, let me go get it. FedEx treats my packages like a soccer ball. FedEx never leaves my packages, they always send them back. <laughs> Oh, it sucks. No fun. I think UPS in my area has been way more reliable, but I don't know. FedEx always comes later in the day, so hopefully it'll be here sometime today. I just, I was surprised. I mean, that's a big old box. And then it wasn't updating, wasn't updating, wasn't updating. And I'm like, mm, yep, they probably did something. And then so it got checked on last night. And then they said they're looking into it. <laughs> it's like, uh-oh. They treat him like a soccer ball. I know I used to work there. <laughs> 
Uh, so when I went to aviation mechanics school, there was a local FedEx distribution facility that a lot of people from the school would actually go to work for while they were uh, visiting to go to school. Um, and yeah, they were, they were like, the good people had to work extra hard to make up for the bad people that worked there. And they would just like, if you put like a fragile sticker, if you put like, please be careful, or like special package for somebody, any type of indication that, that this was a unique package, they were extra rough with it just because they hated their job. <laughs> Not great. Um, most new vehicles. Do you get one just for the quarter windows? Oh. <laughs> oh, shoot. You know what? Maybe we'll leave the quarter windows and then we'll do the roll downs and then we'll come back and platter cut those quarter windows. We might do that. But so, what I don't like about these quarter windows, um, what everybody hates about these quarter windows, is that this rubber it changes from window to window. So you kind of have to like slide your blade in here, free up a little bit of space, and you can kind of sneak it where it needs to go. But even then, it, it's like, I think they're still a little particular from vehicle to vehicle. Let's see if my car works. Hey, looks like that works, so that's cool. Just gonna make sure radio is down. You're an AMP. I uh, didn't actually finish finish, but I'm almost an AMP. I did all the hours and and graduated from the school. I just I I was tinning before, like I was still tinning, and then I just decided to not spend like the I don't know what was the five hundred dollars they were charging for the AMP test and learn all that nightmare. I I fell short right there, so I don't officially have my AMP license. Then you have to like renew it every year, and I'm like, I'm done with aviation mechanics. Did your wife still have the same SUV? Uh, this is it. We actually got rid of the Explorer, so this is the only vehicle that we have right now. Um, we're shopping around. <laughs> we're shopping around uh, right now for like a Sienna. Um, those are really actually hard to come by right now. They're just they're not in stock anywhere, but we're not. We're not like hard looking for one right now. We're just keeping it in mind. Ninety ninety K subscribers, now time to get our Lexus. Yeah, I don't I don't think so. <laughs> I looked at the uh I think another good fit would be the CT, the Cadillac CT6. Like they're, they're slight, they're bigger SUV, but it's not like the biggest one that they have. Or no, 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 XT6, sorry. That's what it is, not CT6. They have the XT4, XT5, and XT6. So I've done this with this window way too many times recently. I have pulled off Pro Nano. I have put back on Pro Nano. I have pulled off uh, Walmart film. The thing is, like I want something with four wheel drive too here. It snows, so that is actually the only van with four-wheel drive, which is kind of ridiculous. Love my 21 High High Platinum all-wheel drive. Oh, Highlander Hybrid. Oh, okay. <laughs> High High, like that. I remember you were talking about uh, um, what car to get. You can't go wrong with a Sienna. If you want a Lexus, take Toyota emblems and put Lexus. Oh, yeah. Yeah, owned by the same company. A lot of similarities in a lot of their vehicles. Um, are you monetized by YouTube? Oh yeah, for sure. 
It's not hard to get monetized on YouTube. They... <laughs> so, back in the day, getting monetized on YouTube, uh, you had to have a thousand subscribers and, like, qualify for their partner program. It was pretty, pretty exclusive. Then they opened it up to everybody, and now they reinforce some rules again, which, in my opinion, is, is a good thing. But, hey, there's still, like, it's, it's pretty meaningless. Um, like, if you get monetized at the bare minimum that they, that they recommend, it's, it's not going to do anything for you anyways. Hardly anything. Ugh. I should have waited for it to dry. Chrysler has an all-wheel van now. Oh, do they? But it's Chrysler. I just, I don't think I could trust that long term. But that's good to know. Maybe in a lease. We were talking about, like, if we can't find, if we can't find the one that we're looking for, maybe we'll just lease something else in between and then just kind of sit in the background. But it's not really urgent. It's just... The new frontier. Is that Nissan? Nissan Frontier. Something like mid to decent sized SUV, so I'm not looking for like a full Suburban. More like Tahoe or just a little smaller, so that's where like the van kind of fits in. Um, and then with all wheel drive and, a, uh, and an aisleway in the middle, that's really like it. The rest of it's kind of like bonus. Can't wait to see you tint the new 400Z. Ooh, that sounds fun. I really like the 350s. And then I haven't gotten a 350 or a 370 in quite a while, though. You're not going to keep it long-term enough to matter? I don't know, because we're kind of... Maybe if we buy it, we'll keep it for the five years then and then get tired of it. But, like, you know those family vehicles that, that they just keep for, like, years and years? That's kind of, like, what I was looking for. It's just, like, yeah, we'll just get something. We'll keep it for a long time. And then that'll just be, like, the family vehicle. But that's with the, with the caveat of being able to lease a new vehicle, like, every two to three years. BMW X5, I think that starts getting a little bit out of the price range that we're shopping for. It would be cool, though. <laughs> You'll be a couple years and then new tech want it. True, but if I get a vehicle that I can just drive, like, and, like, this is, like, for the business, this is kind of the more showy car, then I'll be driving this more often than not, and then the family vehicle is just kind of, like, it's still nice, but it doesn't need everything. Plus, vehicle tech is always like, it's getting better, but there aren't any, any like crazy improvements that make me go, woo, not really. I think one of the most impressive things was like the vacuum cleaner in one of those vans. I was like, really, they put a vacuum cleaner? Okay. <laughs> Lamborghini Iris. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, God, this again. So have you noticed I'm using a, uh, a heat gun instead of steamer? It's because warming up the film is enough to kind of tell you what you're dealing with. And from the windshield... Yikes. From the windshield, we're not going to be, like, super great on time with the steamer. So I'm just, there, there's that point where you just get frustrated. And that's, like, you remove what you can with some heat. If it doesn't come off very easy, then it's just, like, all right, I'm just going to razor the glue off. So, yay, we're done with that. Now I can actually feel like I'm working.
So if we let this sit for a minute too, it'll kind of soak into the glue a little bit and help soften it up. So we'll pull the other side too. Try the new Pathfinder. I don't know, maybe. You what's wrong with it? Oh, no, nothing, nothing was wrong with this. We have Apex. Ooh, ooh. My wife is eyeing the Jag F-Pace. There is the F-Pace. I like the F-Pace. I don't think it's got an aisle, though. Maybe it does. I don't know. Range Rover, uh, the Jag F-Pace, some of those would be strong contenders, but I think they're just probably a little bit out of the price range that I'm shopping for. Mustang Mach-E. I like the Mach-E. I think it looks cool. But do you guys see the the MKBHD video on on the Mach E compared to the other ones when they were using uh, using all the the electric travel systems? <laughs> what a pain! Not fun. You can't st <laughs> you can't steal our idea of the F pace. How is that stealing anybody's idea? What is it like when when like my younger brother he got a like I had an explorer and then he wanted to get an explorer. It's like you can both get the same one. But then he got the sport and he wound up me. But Cadillac's new crossover is nice. I can't even keep up with all of them. I'll look into it. That's cool. Scraping glue. Yeah, I want to get I want to get some 35 back on this thing. Um, what happened to the, the LA's totally awesome? Um, I'd never use that on doors. I don't like spraying adhesive remover on doors because it just gums everything up. So all that runs into your seals. So if you're going to do like door removals, either a steamer or uh, soapy water to kind of keep all the glue together. See, otherwise this would all be like trailing in that bottom seal, and then every time you roll it up and down, it's like, ugh. There we go. Does steam help? Yeah, but it depends on the film. It, it's time consuming, so no matter no matter how you slice it, I either sit here with a steamer and slowly peel it off, or I just get annoyed and rip it off and then and then strip all the glue off anyways. So sometimes I just jump straight to this. How's the baby? The baby's good. Thanks for asking. He's uh, he's getting close to walking. He's definitely crawling and climbing all over the place. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how I can stream on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. You got to use uh, a program called Restream. 
So that's a service that I pay 50 bucks a month for. Um, you should be able to tell it to stream right to Restream. Uh, but it's going to be over, on the, directly off of the GoPro, it's going to be over RTMP. So you'll have YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and a couple of, like, maybe another option. But you can have, like, a manual thing, and then you'll get codes from Restream that you type in, and you do it that way. It's the only way to do it. Well, Restream and any other service like it. That's the only way to do it. When is Glassy going to be back in stock? Uh, more is going to be delivered tomorrow. There was an annoying hiccup, so it's coming freight. And for some reason, they put it on a truck without a lift gate. And I don't have a forklift to get the pallet off of the truck. So they had to, it took friggin' two days of annoyance to like get them to call the shipper and then like it's it, like I called them in the morning to check and they're like oh okay yeah we'll call the shipper and then we'll get it switched over and I was like okay cool and then I call at the end of the day I was like I never got an update on this and they're like oh yeah we're just getting around to calling and I'm like really now it's almost tomorrow and then so I checked this morning. I'm like, so did you guys do that? And they're like, yeah, we did it. Uh, so we can now schedule the delivery for uh, tomorrow. And it's like, Ugh. all right. Thank you. Logistics sucks. Scaling, logistics. <laughs> it's, a, it's a world of fun. It's not just get more. <laughs> It's a, it's a whole nother world. Tips for somebody looking into getting into tinning? Uh, keep watching. Keep watching. Uh, buy some supplies. Um, so you can go to like, here, let me drop a link for you. Sun Distributing. Tint Depot. There's a couple of good resources. They have starter kits, they have film, they have everything that I use, and they have recommendations. So you can kind of figure out what you want to buy and then just play around with it. You don't have to spend a lot of money to like just play around with it. And then you'll know if you want to get into it more. Spray it down with some good old ammonia. Such a harsh chemical. Alcohol, ammonia. I'm gonna, there's a, there's a foaming uh, upholstery cleaner that I'm gonna try. I, I don't like spraying extra harsh chemicals all over the interior I know, unless I know that's gonna be okay. Alcohol and ammonia, they're like, they're all right. But it's still. AC Delco foam glass cleaner. How's that work? Does it like soften up the glue a little bit? Hope it doesn't make it gunky. I haven't tried everything. I just, most adhesive removers they make, or glass cleaners, they start making your film gummy or your glue. They make it really gummy. So then it, it just makes, makes it into a problem. Yeah, awesome's good. Um, but on doors, I don't want it to gum up and get into my seals. So great for back windows and where you can like sweep it into the sides and wipe it off with a towel. But ugh, yeah, it just becomes a problem. Use the steamer. <laughs> We're just making circles now. I wish they had slightly wider scrapers. I couldn't for the life of me find three inch or 
like three inch scrapers. What's the Lowe's tape called? Tried to find it. Okay. <laughs> Wait, sorry, Canon. I need to do something here. I need to literally go to Lowe's and Google Lowe's tape. Because if you guys can't find it by searching that, then, then we have a problem. Um, all right, two seconds here. Let me move a window. All right. Um, hang on, let me do this. <laughs> Where do you find Lowe's tape? Well, Lowe's, let's see, Lowe's tape. Oh my God, what is that? Get the, f there, look. We found it. <laughs> I don't want to hear it, okay? Where do I get the Lowe's tape? Go to Lowe's, search Lowe's tape. There it is. Check availability. And then you can, you can look at your area or you can order it online. <laughs> Here, I'm going to even copy and paste the link for you. I just can't. <laughs> it's mind blowing. It's not mind blowing. <laughs> now where where else? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um. Next comment from most tinners. Now where can I buy that to spend less? Cause I, can I get Lowe's tape at Home Depot for cheaper? Can I get it on Amazon for cheaper? <laughs> Too true. Somebody's typing in item numbers for these things too. <laughs> Call it matte tape. Like there's only so much that I can do. It's literally like plaster all over. I just thought it was really funny. So if you walk into there, it's hidden, but they like, with technology, it's not hard to find. It's going to website, you search, and then it'll tell you the aisle that it's in. So in mine, uh, I have to walk all the way to like it's a house wrap tape. So you have to what you have to walk to like where all the plywood is, and it's kind of like in an obscure spot. But they have employees that annoy you all the time. They come up to you and they go, "Hey, can I help you with anything?" Hang on, I'm gonna wait for Matt to go live and then he'll tell me where the thing that I'm looking for is. So, sorry to put it on blast like that, but I tried looking IRL and I don't trust technology. Well, <laughs> I can't help you. Actually, we just did, it's there. Go to Home Depot, nobody helps you there. They annoy me at Home Depot too. I mean, they don't annoy me, but they ask me. Best Buy, Home Depot, and Lowe's. They actually, they usually come up to me. Maybe just don't go in with a scowl on your face. I see you're using that tape more often. Is there a reason for it? Yeah, it was just sheer laziness. I just ordered some extra tech tape. This is like this carpet shield. They're, they're perfect candidates for those things that I know are like, they're close, they're easy to get. So then I'm like, oh, I gotta get it. Oh, I gotta get it. And then I just don't. And then I run out, and then before I get to, to the shop in the morning or late, later at night, I, I make a quick run and I get it. And then it's a perpetual cycle. Because it's so easily available, I don't have to necessarily just order it. But it's not in a tint store, so I don't order it with everything else either. So it's kind of one of those extra things that I, I get around to eventually.
Okay. I think once we get these little flakes out of here, we should be good. We'll still have a little bit probably to dress, but most of it will be gone. Let's get a couple of these little strings off of the... You can remove glue with carpet cutting razor blades. Are they like box cutting blades? Is that what they're like? As long as they're like kind of flexible, I'd give them a try. I want something that's a little bit wider, but it, like I, I've looked around and things seem either rigid or not quite made for it. I don't know. Because it, it's those little edges. I just don't want them to scratch a window. Okay, so we're going to be doing 35, so let's go grab that. Everything, everything is prepped, ready to go. Um, let us get our 35. What kind of microfiber towels? Um, the ones from Costco are, are pretty, pretty, pretty decent. They come in larger packs too. They're not, I think it's like 20 bucks for like 35 of them. And then you can get into some of the better ones from like the rag company. I like, they have uh, ones called Crimea River. Those ones are really good too. But it's like $20 for like a pack of like three of them. They're, they're oversized towels, but there's a couple ways to do it. There's a lot of like cheesy thin ones that just don't soak up any water. So you're just kind of like smearing everything. So you got to go like a little bit more premium, but there's a couple of ways to do it. You can go all out with high end ones. The Rag Company Waffle Weave. Yeah, those ones, those ones are really good. We're gonna double cut this too. Um, Mostly because we haven't. No need to get super premium for tint, just stick to the Kirkland ones. Oh, look at the size of that bubble. <laughs> Whoa, what's wrong with getting super premium for window tinting? <laughs> if you wanna get like that glass really clean, um, it's kind of harder to do without like a fresh, clean. Uh, like the Costco ones are pretty good. The the Waffle Weave ones are better though. Yeah, they call their, them Dry Me a River, which is great. <laughs> Some fun naming schemes right there. Is that the 30? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that the 35%? It's, it's better than 20 as far as the heat goes? Okay, I don't want to start that. I don't want that to be like a normal thing. It's, yeah, it's, it's marginally better. But <laughs> I'm sure as hell not going to start explaining that to, to customers in that way. I just, I don't want that to be like a streaming thing where it's like, ooh, that one's slightly better. It's like, yeah, if you put it on the heat box, it'll perform a little bit better, but are you actually gonna feel a difference between there? If you put them side by side, maybe? But that's kind of what you're getting into when you're getting into that territory. It's not, it's not gonna. It's like, okay, uh, another good example is like when you order 20% um, from one company, and 20% from another company. They're gonna look different, like slightly different on, on coloring and stuff, uh, but they're actually not necessarily gonna be 20%. So it could be like, oh, the 20 from this one is darker from, than the 20 from this company, but that's what, that's what you're getting into. What size tint roll are you using? Uh, these are 40s. So I've got more than enough material to work with to just do them both uh, as I would, like if I was doing like a 20 inch roll. Uh, 
I think you should give the carpet cutting blades a try. I'm I'm really interested, especially if other people are saying that they're they've worked well. Um, if you could do me like a huge favor, go to the window tint stuff Facebook group and post and just link them. That way I can find them really easily. And I'll definitely check them out. This is definitely looking a little bit more blue when it's doubled up. Uh, just joined the stream, interested in tinning what film, what film or brand do you recommend, like 50 foot, uh, a 50 foot roll? Uh, go to Tint Depot. Geo does that too, so you can get like Pro Classic or C2 or any of the Geo films in, in half size rolls. So either or, but if you're just starting, I suggest trying to save just a little bit more money and play around with the film first before you make a bigger commitment into it. I feel like we should get another blade, but it's stubborn. Ah, come on. I'm being too scared. You know what it is? I didn't clean this top edge. I can hear the grit. You hear that like I think I'm going straight over dirt. That'll make it a little bit more tough to cut. But we got it. Should have wiped that sucker off. How long have you been doing it for? A couple hours. No, a few years. I've uh, been tinning for 13? I think 13? Were we 14? Still 13. Something like that. Nice. That's nice, nice. So I'd love to pull this outside for you guys. And we could. But as far as I know, it's nothing but gray and rainy outside right now. So we're not really going to learn anything from it. So it's probably going to have to revisit it. 13 hours. Would Apex be a competitor to Crystalline? Yeah. So, like, Crystalline... Uh, what is it? Prime, XR Plus, whatever, stuff like that. Any, any other premium uh, heat rejection film, that's where this is. This is 95% uh, IR, good looks, uh, seem to shrink really well. Um, the only question that I haven't been able to answer today, and I'm not going to be able to for a little bit, is uh, when I put this stuff in my car, is it gonna have a haze? So I'm told it's really good, but I won't know till I actually drive around with it. So I'm gonna put this on my front doors. I have it on my windshield. I've been driving around with Pro Nano for a year. I've been very happy with that. So we'll see, we'll see what this stuff looks like. Um, how important is it to roll the corners? You mean like round them? Pretty important. You want to put like a little, 
little curve on them because as the window's rolling up and down, you don't want it to grab any like little points. Because as soon as it starts to flick something away from the film, more of it will start to peel. So that's why you're just gonna round them really quick so it doesn't have a sharp little point to try and grab off the window. Might not do it in a week, might not do it in a month, might not do it in a year, might not do it ever, but. I've heard Apex is extremely expensive. It is expensive. I can't say the price right now. I know the pricing. I um, mean, you can check out the pricing for yourself. But it is expensive. How do you know if a window needs to be shrunk? Just do it. It just assume everything needs to be. I can neither confirm nor deny that. Oh, on chat, that's why I like you guys. You guys would just like spit it out, spit out stuff regardless of what I say. So if I can't say something, you guys will. How to start window tinting? Just do it. Just go get some stuff and throw it in your car and start playing around with it. It's literally the best way. Watch some videos, try and replicate them, have some fun, and uh, you'll get the hang of it. You don't need a degree, you don't need to take a course, all that stuff, or taking a course can help, um, but you don't have to. Have you ever heard anything on Expel? Yeah, I hear good things about them. Solid company, good branding. Uh, you do w good with them, for sure. Can't find pricing for Expel anywhere. So the thing is, too, with a lot of these films is they're not necessarily just a blanket price. Some people have tiered pricing. Pricing is one of those things uh, for for premium or film companies in general, but especially when you get into the, the more premium ones, it's like they don't want their pricing to be out there for everybody to see because it's not for everybody to see. It's for the dealers specifically. And then some of the pricing can vary depending on how much you order. So you could be a tier one, uh, tier two, tier three. Um, not every company does that, but those can be done in the background. So it's just one of those things where you're never going to be able to find it directly unless you actually contacted the company or they have it listed, you know, usually privately in a dealer portal or something like that. It's like I don't get to go into a furniture store and see how much a company paid for that couch. <laughs> It's kind of what it's like with uh, when you're getting into some of these window films. They don't want that out there because they're trying to protect their dealers, too. So that's why we're not publicly, like, it's not that hard to find out Geo's pricing, but that's why we're not publicly saying it either. It's like we're, we're trying to keep some type of barrier there. More to protect dealers and stuff like that. Um, why do you tape the edges? Because it turns out cleaner that way. It's just a nitpicky thing that you don't have to do, but I like to do it now. It helps. <laughs> I'm a good tinter. Uh, I'm a good tinter, but you make it look easy. Just lots of practice, and that's not always the case, but thank you. We have our problems too, but there's like, what you see me tint a lot of times is stuff that I'm really familiar with tinting anyways, like the style of the doors, types of vehicles, everything kind of sits within this range. I have another boat coming in on Monday. 
That'll be fun. Can you tin a windshield with a crack? You can, I'd suggest replacing it though, because it's kind of a lot of effort to put into a cracked windshield. You might get in trouble for having a cracked windshield, so, meh. If you came here and you're like, hey, I'll pay you to tint my cracked windshield, absolutely. But I'll still tell you it's advised to get it replaced first, because it's just trying to save you a little bit. But yeah, you could do it. Have you ever run into an electrical problem? I have. Uh, they freak me out. They're not fun. That's why we put so much care into covering everything. Because I don't want to ever deal with that again. Uh, but there probably will be something that eventually happens that is completely outside of my control. And it's probably going to happen on stream. And that's not going to be fun. <laughs> but it hasn't happened yet. So we're still okay. edge is just slightly up. But this edge looks so good, so we'll try and fix it. Yeah, so when you tin a windshield, water can run to any number of places, and there's a lot of computers and uh, little little shorts that you can make. Um, if it happens to the client, what do you say? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Sorry about your <laughs> loss. No, I'm kidding. You take care of it. You go, yeah, you do go, oops, sorry. Um, look, man, I'm going to take care of this. And then you take care of it because they put their vehicle in your care and you need to then fix the situation. <laughs> Does your wife tell you you're the best tinter too? <laughs> no, she's probably tired of hearing about it. I get tired of hearing about window tint stuff all the time. Do Mercedes not like water? All electronics don't like water. There isn't anything, like there's, there's some problem vehicles, so there's just modules and weird spots on particular vehicles, but there's no like, you, you don't know until you know. So join a bunch of Facebook groups, keep an eye out for problem vehicles and cross your fingers that you weren't the first person to run into it, and then you kind of know ahead of time. Uh, I ran into uh, this issue on a Durango. Luckily, I was at a shop that was able to help me out with it. So we did, um, we did two doors on a Durango. It's got speakers right here, and then there's a wire from that speaker that goes down to a module right about here. Didn't think anything of it. Tinted a bunch of Rams, tinted a bunch of, actually I've tinted Durangos in the past. But the slightly newer model had a module there that I wasn't aware of until I screwed it up. Then you just gotta fix it. You either pull it out, dry it out, and cross your fingers that everything works, or you're calling the dealership for a new one, or sending it to service to get taken care of. Whatever, whatever that may be. Are tint kegs worth it? Oh yeah, from day one I've been using them. Well, okay, not day one. Day one that I knew that they were a thing, um, I pretty much got one right away. They're awesome. Um, they've made improvements since then too. So they used to be like, 
with uh, with like a fixed hose setup, curly, um, and a plastic sprayer. Now they're a lot better. Um, but I've been using them for a long time. I don't know, where is my like trash can style keg? It's sitting around here somewhere. Um, but now I have tank keg. So they're, there's a couple of things that are really good about them compared to, actually there's a lot of things that are really good about them, but there's a few like key features that I really like. Biggest one, biggest one is like the hose and brass sprayer setup, much better. Um, and the fact that they have the quick disconnects. And they look cool. And they have upgraded fittings. Audi has an $800 computer module. Ooh, that's no good. Question, um, with the Audi, what one in particular? And is there something special that you can do to protect it, or is it just like a use less water type of recommendation? <laughs> How much? Um, so it depends on the setup. They range from like, I don't know, I think they're about 300. How do you set up your keg to have two hoses? Well, I'm glad you asked. Cannon. All right, let's, let's mosey over here real quick. I can show you. All right, there we go. So I go to sundistributingdirect.com, um, go to shop now, and tink kegs and parts. Um, so the one I'm using right now is the three gallon. Uh, I also have the five gallon one. Um, I prefer the size of the three gallon. You can get through most of a day um, just fine off of a three gallon and they're way more portable. But if you want the five, get the five. But you click on the three um, and then they got all these extra little setups. Um, and as far as the dual setup, sprayer type, wrap type, add to cart. Doesn't look like they have it listed. I would uh, message them about the dual one specifically. Or they do, do you have a dual sprayer conversion kit right here, so you, you'd pick this up with it, but I'm sure that they would set it up for a dual if you want it too. But this is what you're looking for, um, the dual sprayer conversion kit. So you have uh, on the kegs, wow, that doesn't really show you very much. Um, all right, let me, let me take over this. So what you have is uh, an inlet and an outlet, and basically this unscrews from here, and then you put a slightly bigger ball lock connector on here that takes the inlets, and then it's got a dip tube. So now you have two tubes running to the bottom that have fluid. And you, have, you can put one hose on each side of the vehicle. Super handy. So, I thought they'd be a little bit more clear about it, but you're right, they're not. <laughs> but they watch this sometimes, so they'll, they'll pay attention. I'll ask them about it and they'll be like, oh no, you should have gone here. I wanna, I wanna actually do, um, I actually want to do longer hoses too. So these are like 30 foot and they're, they're like 25 or 30 feet. So it's long enough for one car all the way around as long as you put the, the keg kind of towards that tire. Front tire or back tire uh, depends on what you're doing. But if you want it to kind of stretch all the way around, you need hoses that are just a little bit longer. Oh, I forgot. Where's my chat? And then my window. Ooh. Um, Windows shift. Do you know if you push Windows shift and then the right arrow button, then you can move from one monitor to the other one? You can move a window from one monitor to the other one. That was one of those things that I totally had to search. Cool. So we got one door done. We're going to do this other one. 
We don't have the quarter done. I'm going to leave the quarter the way it is for today. And I'm waiting for I'm waiting for the plotter, and then we'll see what the plotter does with it. <laughs> That's a good excuse. I'm using global QDP, and man, it it drives fast or it dries fast. That's it's in the name. Yeah, with the global films, Quick Dry Plus, um, like Quarry films in general, they stick a lot more. So I'll use a little bit. I'll use more soap. I use baby shampoo and Dawn mixed together. Some people are saying uh, Joy Non Ultra is a really good option too. That's one I have to try out. I have Joy Ultra version. I haven't tried Joy Non Ultra. I'm getting my windows tinted uh, Friday. They have the machine and software for the measurements. Is that good? Uh, yeah, it can be. I tend to not use plotters. It really depends on the software that they're using and how good those patterns are uh, as far as fit goes. It, it makes everything a little bit more efficient for your shop, but some But some film or some patterns um, don't line up quite as well as what you'd like them to. So hopefully, <laughs> if they're a good shop, they'll do a good job though. So I wouldn't be too worried about it. It's a way to keep blades off your car too. So that's kind of nice. What brand ceramic are you using? Uh, I'm using GeoShield. What makes it the best? because I'm using it. That's what makes it the best. It's what I use. Why would I use anything that's not the best? Have you ever scratched a window as I'm literally s slicing off part of my tent? Yes, I have. What I do now, um, <laughs> what I do now uh, I've tried to, to refine things a little bit more to be as safe as I can while I'm, while I'm cutting on the car. So glass aid on the windshield or the back window. Um, and then everywhere we cut, we'll usually cut corners over on the glass boards instead of the vehicle. This is my own personal one. So, eh, it is what it is. It's fine. <laughs> Stainless steel blades are, are pretty safe for cutting on glass, but you know, you just never know. So we usually do everything to be a little bit safer here, but I just wanted to trim that off a little bit. Is there sample rolls on your website? No. Geo, you can contact them direct and they have a sample program, but it's, it's, they don't give people just free film. Though you can pay for a sample and then they'll credit that sample towards like full rolls, but they had too many people requesting free samples that were just like abusing the system because you have people that just want to tint their own car. A lot of people watch, you know, come across this channel, them possibly want to try Geo, and then if they know that they can get the same type of film to try in their own car for free, that's where there was like a big problem. Where do you order global? Uh, they're territory based. Um, so different distributors, go to global's website and then see what distributors are for your area and you could contact them. I'll totally pay for a sample. Yeah, contact them direct. Where does the water go? It evaporates. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it gets sucked into a portal and we never see it again. No, it travels through, uh, through like the, there's like typically a plastic membrane in between like the switches and stuff and the glass. And then that water goes to the bottom of the door and then uh, out the drain holes at the bottom. Every car door has drain holes at the bottom.
So would you believe that when you have your door shut and it's raining, water is still seeping into the doors? They're not watertight. But they're pretty good. But there is water still getting inside the doors, even when they're closed. So that water's got to go somewhere. Water, condensation, all that. All right, how close? It's totally safe to get water in the door frame. In most cases, yeah. There's like the handful of cars where they're starting to put modules in like weird spots. Um, but that's kind of like, uh, we don't know un until like we know. So shops aren't gonna do anything to, uh, to like, well, okay, most shops, most okay, good shops, good shops are gonna take care of you if it's a problem. So uh, more often than not, everything's fine. 99% of the time, everything's fine. Um, in the occasional instance that something happens, water, like they, they just change the design of a door. Like, like I was talking about a Durango earlier. They have the speaker on the door a uh, wire runs directly to a module that's in a weird spot. So it was just the way the water trailed and all of a sudden picked up on that speaker wire and went to a module. That's not okay. But now I know about that. <laughs> so I know how to correct for that. But yeah, 99% of the time, everything's fine. Solar effects posted, they have your glass aid back in stock. That's good. Yeah, I sent it to them a little bit ago. Um, maybe they were waiting for everybody else to run out of stock and then they're like, now we got it. <laughs> um, they'll probably run out and then I'll be able to restock them again. I have a, I have a big old shipment coming tomorrow finally. If I had a forklift, it could have gotten delivered yesterday. The GeoShield rolls on my tin stuff is the same you use? Yes. Have you ever used solar effects window film? Uh, no, but I hear good things. A lot of people use solar effects. They really like them. Follow up, getting my windshield tin in Friday, thinking of getting the windshield tin in 70. What do you think? 70% uh, is really good if you want kind of like a non-tint look to it. So I have a handful of videos on the channel, like we did an older Escape, uh, super clean. We did 70 on the front doors and the windshield. Um, and then we've done like a, we did an F-150 that was, um, oh, okay, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, da, 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 da. Have you ever used, no, no, what was that? Oh yeah, back to 70% real quick though. Um, we did an F-150, 70% on the windshield and the sunroof. Guy was super happy with it. Like everybody that's gotten it has been really happy with it. But so 70% is kind of if you don't want a tinted look to your windshield, but you want to get that heat protection. Um, 50 will give you a tinted look uh, but it's, it's lighter. So that we actually did 50% on this. Dang. <laughs> there we go. So I'll show you what the windshield looks like on this one. This is why, guys, this is why, real talk, this is why I really like 50. When you're trying to explain percentages and you only have one vehicle uh, to show it on, like I have the slides up front Showing the slides is not the same as showing the vehicle. So 50% gives you a light look, 35% gives you a decently, uh, like a pretty dark look. So when I get this closed up, you'll be able to see 50 on the windshield, 35 on the front doors, and, uh, and we got 20 on the back. Gotta clean up that glue. Yeah, I'm gonna do the quarters when I have the plotter and then you guys can understand a little bit more. We'll see how that works. Not expecting the plotter to handle these quarters super well, but. 
you have any employees at your shop? No. No, I've got, I got a buddy um, that helps with scheduling, but he doesn't stay at the shop. It's actually really easy to run like a tent business. Like tinting is, is the challenge, but as far as like customers and stuff, most of it's phone calls and whatever. And then uh, other than that, it's like if you schedule appointments, you don't, you don't have to take care of a lot. It can get hectic, especially if you want to allow like people just walking in and then trying to entertain them. That can make it a little bit more tough. Woo! Dang. I like that. It looks the same. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It doesn't. It does. It doesn't. So 35 and 50. So in this light, 50%, it's going to appear a little bit darker because this is like really cloudy conditions. And this is what I mean by that 50 kind of blends the dark border in with the glass a little bit more because now you have just an overall smoked look on it. Um, if you're just trying to focus on looking through the windshield, you can definitely see into the vehicle. But when you're bring, when it's outside, it's overcast or sunny day, you have so many, like, see this right now? We have so many reflections. It kind of smokes it out a little bit, blends it in a little bit more, but it's still a pretty nice lighter look. And then we got 35 on the sides. So when I'm looking like this, it looks plenty dark to me. Now if I stand on the side and I squat down a little bit, I can see through perfectly fine. And then compared to 20, uh, you can tell a clear difference between the 35 and the 20 on the back. So, Canon. Somebody said they went to the Institute and it was a total waste of time. They did the one-on-one -on -one training. It lasted only 20 minutes. How does it only last 20 minutes? That, uh, that's surprising. Is like the owner just too busy to actually, like, what do they do? I'm curious. Because I saw their pricing, too. They're like $700 a day. Lowe's has three and a half inch carpet blades, but they are double sided, so sharp on the top and bottom. Interesting. I'm assuming they have a holder, too. Another reason to recommend Lowe's. <laughs> oh, wait, my car's on. One sec. I'm going to fall. Where's the key? Oh, there's the key. Okay. Oh, that's why it had a problem shutting off. Okay, hang on, let's see. Does this work? Hey! It works! How about that? How do I how do I stop it? There we go. Perfect. Owner leaves the shop for errands. Oh. <laughs> That's no good. There's hundreds of videos on Tinstitute. Yeah, they uh they had like a, a program, like they, they, were, they started as more of like a video platform um, and then they realized that that doesn't work so well and then they started broadening out to total, like, you know, if you have, you want websites, stuff like that, they have, they have a lot of tint specific business advice and programs and stuff to facil facilitate that. But I saw their pricing for their classes so I figured they either had somebody full time to do the classes or if it's just like 20 minutes with the owner and that's who that you think you're going to be working for or with and then they surprise you with somebody else that's kind of a problem how about tent warriors i have no idea i know they have classes too i'd assume you'd be working with you with uh with sean on that but i have no idea um I haven't, I haven't heard any, any referrals or, like, I don't know. Like, for, for a lot of these programs, I don't know until somebody comes in here and tells me how it actually is. Like, with Expels, uh, there, there's, like, f people are, 
this was like a couple years ago when I found out about them. They're they're like five days for like a grand, and they weren't all locked down with their window tinning. But when when you go to an Expel training course, they more teach you insulation and plotters, not hand cutting, because they they want you to be part of that system. So some people were disappointed from that, but it was cheaper, so. I believe YouTuber tinners like you is where we really learn. Thank you. Well, this is like, this is literally what you're gonna be doing. It, it just, and I try and get better cameras so you can see it better. Um, Use a plethora of YouTube videos and learn less by trial and error for 700 a day. You can, uh, for a class, you can buy your own material, make mistakes for less. Yeah, so no matter what, buying your own material and making your own mistake, it's, it's definitely going to be less expensive. Going and training with somebody for even a couple of days is really beneficial, but I think if it's set up right, most of the classes I would assume would be, so like the window tinning school down in Jackson, I hear good things about that place. Um, there's, there's just, when people come into those classes though, they're kind of starting from all over the place. Some people have played with film, some people have never touched it before. So some of them they'll have like specific, I think they have like specific more advanced training days where they assume that you've used some tint uh, and then they have like a broader, like if you've never touched tint before, we're gonna start from scratch. We're gonna teach you about spray bottles, solutions and all that and kind of go from there. I would be, I'd, I don't know. I could teach a, a complete class, but I would much prefer to kind of assume that you already played with film and then just kind of get into techniques and stuff because if you're only gonna be around for like two or three days, I, I, it's much more beneficial to kind of get you up to speed Best advice, practice till you're decent and then work with somebody for 10 plus years experience uh, for three years. That's, that's good um, if you can swing it. So if you can find a shop and work for them and then learn, the <laughs> it gets tough for a business because if you're the business, you want them there longer than, than three years. Um, there, there'll be a good like six months to a year of that that's just gonna kind of be that could be focused on getting you better, and then they, they have you for a couple years, and then you leave and go open your own business in the area or something, that kind of sucks. But if you are trying to learn and create your own business, yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely a way to do it. It's just, there's, there's two sides to that coin that gets really tricky to talk about. <laughs> Would you recommend a plotter as an initial investment for somebody opening up a shop? Mm, yeah, I, if you can swing it, yeah. Um, plotters will make life way easier if the patterns are okay. So that's, that's a world we're gonna dive into pretty soon. I should have a plotter here today. Not here, but at my house. I should finally have it today. Um, just saw your video, what do you think of Apex? <laughs> We're still live. <laughs> Sorry, that was that was GeoShield. Um, I was just checking to see. I'm checking to see right now if I got the uh, if I got it or not. FedEx usually comes later afternoon, so let me refresh this and see. How do you get most of your business ads? Most of it, I think, comes through just being like looking nice on Google um, and then also these videos have, have been pretty powerful too. On FedEx vehicle for delivery, still hasn't been delivered yet. Okay, so I don't have it yet. And I'm crossing my fingers that nothing happened to it because it went missing for like a week. Like this, dude, like I said, I was supposed to get it like last week sometime I think and then it was scheduled Monday it went to Arizona, and then it just went off the map. Complete, like, just no updates since the 16th. And then we called about it yesterday. And then they lost it. And then, oh, look, we found it. <laughs> Woke up this morning, it's out for delivery. Like, uh, okay. So, we'll, uh, we'll try it. 
Thoughts on new core cutting software? I've, I've never played around with that, I don't know. We're gonna be using film cut though. Um, that's what we're gonna start out with. We're getting a workhorse plotter, which is definitely far off from GraphTech, Vinyl Express, and uh, Roland. It's a more budget-oriented plotter. So I'm excited to play around with that because I get a lot of those questions that, you know, would you recommend a plotter if you're just starting? I think it's a really, it's a really valid question. On the one hand, if you're learning, um, and you have a plotter handy, you can speed things up with, like, every time I go to tint that door, I gotta recut it, I gotta recut it, I gotta cut. So if you can already have five patterns cut out and just go time after time after time, tint, 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 and the patterns are good enough, then, then it'll save you time. Where it'll really count against you is if you always rely on a plotter and then you have to make up for that, like you run into a car that's not in your system yet, or the patterns just suck. So then you have to hand cut it anyways, and you're like, well, I don't hand cut, I platter cut. So that's where it'll really cripple you. You need to know how to hand cut no matter what, but it can help you out in certain circumstances for sure, especially as a higher production shop. You got it from, I got it from Plotter De Depot, totally different from Tint Depot. They just look the same. <laughs> Yeah, they're, uh, they're sending one out. So we're gonna be doing a whole thing on plotters. So they, they're they like, hey, we're offering plotters now. And I'm like, hmm. <laughs> and then we started talking a lot and uh, there's stuff with uh, this particular software that I'm hoping, I'm crossing my fingers really hard, but I'll know pretty quick whether or not. I hear good things about it, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see when we get it. So we're playing around with it. It's the, uh, the workhorse plotter. I'm still looking for the best ceramic for windshield DIY. Tesla Model 3, just enough for one shot. There's a lot to put on one shot for a Model 3 windshield. Um, especially if you've never tinted before, you're probably gonna royally screw it up. But go to uh, Tint Zoom if you wanna get like GeoShield. You can go to tintzoom.com and then they have like, you can buy enough bulk film uh, just to do a windshield and ceramic and stuff like that. That's usually a pretty good site to go to. Uh, with a plotter, a group of four tinted 50 VW Sport Wagons in a day. Ooh, that's a lot. Yeah, so like really an ideal setup with a plotter is you got somebody running a plotter, you have one or two installers that are just like, you know, somebody cutting patterns, weeding them, throwing them on the car, or making them available for the tinners to then come grab. Then the, all they gotta do is shrink because a good tinner, he's great at installing. He, he can do everything else, but a plotter is taking care of the hand cutting side. So you can take somebody who's not really tint proficient, you can throw them on a plotter, and then they can be your plotter guy. So you can have a prep person run a plotter and really speed you up, very nice. If you are running the plotter and tinting the car, it does save you some time, but maybe not as much as you might think, and it will kind of turn you into a bit of a lazy tinner too, I think, or it has a potential to. So it's really about how you're set up. You have become my family's favorite show. My wife keeps asking if you are married and what, <laughs> yes, yes, I'm, I'm happily married, thank you. That's cool that I've, uh, I've become your family show. That's kind of funny. Um, how much is the plotter? Uh, it's a $1,600 plotter. So it's very, that's a, that's a pretty budget plotter. They go cheaper than that. But you could buy like a secondhand uh, Vinyl Express or Roland for, I think on the lower end, probably a couple grand. If you're lucky, 1,500. More often than not, a brand new GraphTech uh, or Roland is going to be about 4,500 to 5,500. That's for like the 40 inch. That's for a uh, that's for a 40 inch plotter. Um, the you can get like a. I mean, the next step up would then be getting like a full 60 inch plotter. But for window tinting, you don't really need it unless you're in architectural. You really don't need it for window tinting like at all. 40 inch? Yeah, it's the it's their like 51, so basically the 40 inch plotter. 
I just got a new Roland, so I'll be selling my Jag. Nice, very cool. Um, how the J I've when they were, when they first came out, I heard iffy things, but it looked like they probably stayed a little better. Roland is a much stronger Roland and GraphTech. Those are like those are like I don't know 3M and Lumar or whatever. Like th those are like the brands that you hear about for window film. Roland and GraphTech, those are the brands that you hear about most for uh, for plotters. You can cut a Tesla with a 60 plotter. Yeah, that's like that's like one of the only reasons to have a 60 inch plotter though. So if you're not regularly doing like model three back windows, running a, a 60 inch plotter all the time, there's so many cars you'll be doing a 36, a 40 inch roll, 20 inch rolls. So it's just like, they're just big machines to have around. So if you want something with a little bit smaller profile, 40 inch, 99% of what, what most shops do, unless, Again, if you're the ones that are doing the Model 3s all the time, then you know you're, that's what you're going to want. Jag was my favorite. Oh, that's cool. I'm not familiar with Roland. Um, like, personally, I know of them. I've heard great things about them. I've just never been able to use one. So when's the boat coming in? The boat is uh, coming in on Monday. So that should be fun. Earlier you said there were earlier you said there were a few cars that caused electrical issues besides the Durango. Do you remember them? The Rams. I have videos on that. Um, Mercedes C Class in the driver's door. I have had the key stop working. Um, it, the car will start. Um, everything will work. There's a module that sometimes needs to dry out that if it gets wet. Generally completely fine, but I have had that happen. Um, not, not a lot else than that. There was like a 5 Series BMW where they have an amp right in the back windshield um, that water could run down there, and then you hear a beep. But there's, there's definitely more than that. Those are just ones that come to mind. I'm new to tinting, but worried to screw up cars when I start. Um, yeah, that happens. <laughs> you, you just got to know that you, something's going to happen. That's just, that's just how it is. You, you just got to kind of dive in and do what you can to keep things safe. But know that that might happen a little bit more in the beginning. Overall, everything should be fine, though. Um, if you get a lot of cars like these, you know, w what you normally see on the channel, uh, those are pretty straightforward cars, Malibus. Uh, or Chevy, Chrysler, um, Ford, a lot of those, th those main three brands, m most things are totally fine on them. And then we branch out into like some BMW, Mercedes, um, Audi, and then from there, Toyota, Honda. Most things, if you just tint them how you see on the channel, you'll totally be fine. Do you think Carpet Shield would work mobile? Not really. Because Carpet Shield, like, it, it works really well because I can put it on the sides and then pull a piece off. Um, something that might help, these weren't my favorite, but they were by, like, Lowe's. I bring up Lowe's all the time, and I didn't start going to Lowe's until more recently. I always went to Home Depot. Um, I forgot what it was called. I'm just doing a quick little search here. It's like 3M blue plastic. It's like blue painter's tape, but it comes on a roll. And I can't find that Lowe's tape. We just searched it on Lowe's site. <laughs> All right, I can't find this yet. It's over in the painting section. Um, I don't think I have a roll handy though, but there are a couple different ones floating around. I don't know what the yellow ones people are using. Uh, Tint Pro, if you're still here, I actually saw you use it. What's the plastic you use to cover the doors? That would be really helpful. It's yellow. It's got like a yellow uh, tape on it and then plastic. They come in rolls, usually like uh, 
like a tape roll. It's a it's like this big. Yeah, you pull it, you tape where it needs to go, and then the plastic pulls down. Um, that's pretty good. That would be much better for mobile. It just depends on the tape. Sorry, I think I missed this, but can you use scrub pad to get the glue off the back window? Yeah, absolutely, but you have to use an adhesive remover with it. You can't just use the scrub pads. It's just not gonna work. So you definitely want to use, um, I got it from Mike Noring. Oh, okay, all right. It's, uh, I know where it comes from then. Um, they can, what's his, uh, I don't know if you can type in links. Does he do that? Does he have a website now that he actually sells? <laughs> he did so many like Insta or uh, like PayPal things. I, did, I never wanted to recommend it for that. Um, the, uh, what were we talking about? Okay, so uh, anyways, in the if you go to into the painting section, um, that's where they have this like it, it's it'll be like a 3M blue uh, painter's tape, and then it'll have drop plastic. It's it's for covering up larger areas when you're painting houses and stuff. In the paint section of Home Depot, yep, yep, that it was a good alternative. It's just the tape. Sometimes it doesn't stick to certain door panels, just like the carpet shield. That's why we put tape over the, the paneling. It's just one of those weird things, man. Like there's so many tapes and, and sticky things that don't quite stick to door panels, but they stick to everything else. It, it, door panels are such a pain. Um. I grab from the top roll and throw it down while still hiking the end for the carpet seal. So you basically just take it and go <laughs> That'll work, that'll probably work. But yeah, it's, it probably needs a little bit of a technique to it. Are you gonna make a video on the plotter? Absolutely, we're gonna have, we're gonna have a lot about the plotters because there's, there's so much to know. Um, we're gonna set the entire thing up live. Um, we're gonna have some videos on setting up the plotter, just general usage. Um, and then there'll be some cool things on like where I think it can help your business and where uh, it's, it's lacking. So think of it more of like, more often than not, just think of a plotter as like an intermediate assistant where you still need somebody to actually help with the cutting and stuff if you wanna keep uh, everything moving. Um, but really it's like, it's, it's, a, it's a decent assistant, and the, the accuracy really depends on how refined the software is, how refined the patterns are. So if they're just not great patterns, you're not gonna have a great experience with your plotter. If they are good patterns, then you're really gonna enjoy using your plotter, um, and it's really a benefit when you can have somebody else run it for you, and then you can go ahead and tint the car. You look exhausted, well thank you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to have a wisdom tooth pulled here soon. I'm not sure. I felt off for like a couple of days now, especially because like right back in here, it's like, ah, not fun. I never had my wisdom teeth pulled, but I might have to finally. There's a lot to learn with Potter, but it is a great help. Yeah, yeah, just as long as the patterns work, you'll have a good time. Without that, man, they drive you crazy. There's always gonna be those little tech hiccups, like it's cutting through the film, um, and you need to change the cut strip, or you just can't get it honed in right, so, so whatever you do, it's like you're just wasting film, and more film, and it'll drive you crazy. On a busy day, it's just like you can't have it. But when it's working, and everything's going great, yeah, it's good. All right. So, I think we're probably going to uh, end things here. Next live is going to be, when is the next one? Ah, I'm still waiting for this plotter to be delivered. 
GME. Nothing happened with GME today. See, it was another it was another whatever day. <laughs> um let's see. Definitely Saturday. Um what is today? Is today Wednesday or is it Thursday? Wednesday. So we'll probably have another stream before then, but definitely on Saturday. So things have been a little bit slow lately and I've been trying to fill it in. Um I wanna stream the plotter as soon as we get it. So that'll pr if I get it today, I'll probably set up a stream for it on Friday. Is this a shop that uses computer cut? Is this shop that uses computer cut tint worth going to? Yeah. <laughs> uh, if probably, but. This is one of those things. I don't want to say no, but I've had a lot of frustration with, with software. So some are better than others. When you roll the windows down, do those patterns match up pretty nice against the top edge? That's usually where it's the biggest letdown. Some shops will computer cut their tint and then they'll hand cut the top edge. But generally speaking, if you, if you don't pay attention to this stuff and you just go to a shop, get your car tinted, and they're a good shop, you'll be happy with whatever they do. But it's when you're, when you're looking at those little particular things, if you're watching this channel, some of that stuff is coming to mind now, you wouldn't have thought of it before. Uh, that's where like, eh. Computer cut is legit, DAP is legit. Yeah, some of the, film and vinyl sucks. I wholeheartedly agree. <laughs> computer cut I had some issues with, but like some people just call the whole process computer cut too, but yeah. DAP and FVD. I, mm, FVD. Film and vinyl drove me absolutely crazy. That was probably one of the worst ones that I dealt with. DAP was great, though. They had good patterns. They're locked down now, so if you're not an XPAL dealer, I can't recommend them. All right, and on that note, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off here. I'm going to go home. I'm going to drive around with, with some new Apex out in the rainy, cold weather. Perfect time to do it, right? <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm I'm all set for today. So thank you guys for hanging out, um, and uh, we'll have another stream here soon. As soon as I get this plotter in, I want to go live with it, and I want to set it up, and uh, and we'll we'll get going on it. I'm actually a little bit annoyed because I just remembered if I'm playing her. Oh, we'll do it on the back doors. I was gonna say I don't want to remove these front doors just to play around with the plotter. So we have the quarters, we have back doors, we have a back window. We, we have some stuff to mess around, and then we'll do it on actual people's cars, too. Have a good one. Thank you, sir. All righty. Oh, yeah, Super Chats, really quick. Bop, bop. All right. Where is it? 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 Do I have a severe? It's 56 right now. And I have windows telling me that it's rainy with an exclamation mark. So it's been pretty, pretty nasty today. Looks like that. F we had really nice weather this month, and then all of a sudden it took a dive. All right, so Super Chats. Big shout out to Alligator, CJ, Jose, Jose, Cameron, uh, Ch Ch Chano, Chano, I'm sorry, I don't know exactly, but we'll say channel. Uh, Daniel, Kevin, uh, thank you all for the Super Chats today. Greatly appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed um, learning a little bit more about the different films today. Uh, we did the heat box, and uh, we'll be back here very soon. I'll give you an update on the Apex. Right now, I like it, but it could be hazy. Who knows? <laughs> so uh, we'll go live here pretty soon. Have a good one, and uh, Bye. Get some rest. <laughs>